So Economo, you would be okay with me purchasing an animal and fucking it, right? Okay, so you're telling me there's a dog that does a thing that it does not want to do for moral reasons. Like, these people throw the fucking book at him. True, actually. You guys keep being dismissive without knowing what the fuck you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I, I, I'm really confused as to why you got these I, I, I wasn't dismissive, like, I just answered directly. Wait, I was. You, you literally okay. said so I'm sure fucking your neighbor's dog might be fun sometimes, but you probably shouldn't do it, right? That's why you're, you're not me getting off. what we're saying. Listen. I understand listen, what you're saying, it's just wrong. Listen, listen, listen. Police what was the fine. most recent police thing? Wasn't there like, uh, wasn't there? Yeah, wasn't there like somebody was talking about a murderer who got out or some because what what the f were you talking about? Oh, are you talking about Daryl huh? Brooks? Daryl Brooks, no. uh, he kind of fell through the cracks of the criminal justice system, but um, and he should have been in jail. Um, uh, but uh, me well, got seven hundred and sixty-two years. He'll be all right. Yeah, but you know, if he if he had if if the justice system had been more competent, he wouldn't have been out to even commit the crime that he did anyways. So yeah. Ooh, so we're back uh, to wait, whether so or not fucking cash ba bail should be a fucking thing or whether or not because now now I'm a little bit more posty as I've gotten fucking more into this fucking game. I'm with Doobie where he's like, fuck these people, throw the fucking book at him. True, actually. Oh which Connor's people going authoritarian. I, I'm going communitarian. The libertarianism <laughs> and authoritarianism have to be fucking balanced. It should not be one or the fucking other. In, individualism is cringe. Collectivism is cringe. It has to be a balance between the two. Wow, try hard uh, So I guess I'm, the, I'm trying the to understand. Enlightened what interest, is, the enlightened what centrist mean? take of having no principles. What, what is Doobie's stance? What is Doobie's stance? What, what does that mean, uh, throw the book Oh, at them? he basically, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to kind of straw man him a little bit but basically it's like there's rules to society mm -hmm. obey those rules if you don't obey those rules fuck you and if you can't learn to fucking function that way then fuck you again i i kind of agree with that yeah like you can get the fuck out go to a different society it's frustrating well, it's but then obviously that's fucked up for people who are like you know they get jailed for weed or they get jailed for you know other like really simple no, shit that doesn't really well, yeah. Okay, well, that's it's against bit. the rules to do the weed. Don't do the fucking weed. Like it's that simple. The weed oh, is boy. fun, though. Yeah. So what? Yeah. God, that's a dumb fucking thing what that if, you should sure, do. Sure, sure, I'm, sure sure I'm sure fucking your neighbor's dog might be fun sometimes, but you probably shouldn't Jeez. do it, right? Oh, I, I think mean, that I there are levels. About the thing, but, Guys, what about there's the a spectrum. That you should do. This is, this okay. is just like, yeah, but, there's yeah, a spectrum exactly. of Maybe bad like, things and non-society things to do. I, I would say weed is probably as harmful as alcohol. That would be my impression. Yeah, the spectrum I is... I would you know, say that's that weed is less harmful. That's retarded. I would what? say that weed is less harmful than alcohol. Alcohol is one of the most dangerous drugs there is. Well, like, I think, I just, okay, I'm, I think that weed is pretty low on the list, okay? your neighbor's cat that's definitely high on the list you should probably not be in society than, than, than wait why is that high on the list that's high on the list for like what if no, i were to f my own cat out. um Listen, i would not maybe? like that probably Don't not do okay that. it's my property yeah, it you is your property you you're right that. that's a property i can f my cat if i want to i mean yeah. technically yeah. i guess it could but... be illegal. put the cat down it shouldn't be illegal but I mean, I can agree it's a little. That's one not there. what they say by that's grab. That's not what they means by grabbing by the pussy. All right. Look, I feel like a cat would actually be a really bad choice. They have like claws and shit. Yeah, cats would like, be a right. bad choice Doobie, because you I, have, I, like, I a large for Thirty right. seconds, and now we're talking about cat fucking in detail. What the? Uh -huh. fuck? No, I'm just saying <laughs> okay. they they have claws and they're like really flexible. I but feel like it's not, a bad choice. That's not the that's not the only reason why. Also, I mean, you would probably destroy that cat. Like just the size so? differential. Oh that my cat would goodness, be I another one. permanently we're damaged. We're talking about this. Animal okay, no, If I want to buy no, fuck a it, fucking, I'm fucking gonna go full blown. I want to buy ten hamsters and use them as flesh That's my fucking prerogative. Uh, I'm gonna go full blown. All right, I'm gonna go full blown libertarian here. All right. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Animals are not moral agents. I don't give a. About that's him. bullshit at the end of that's the day at the, listen bullshit. at the end of the day i would kill a million with puppies Connor to save one baby hitler okay that's renaming the stream to is today. a moral <laughs> in listen is a moral agent now the the problem with animal abuse is that we recognize that the, the type of individual 
that engages in that engages in animal abuse mm-hmm. is the same type of person that would engage in abuse against other humans. That's why we have animal abuse laws. Not because animals are some special fucking thing, right? Not because there's Dude, anything special fucking, about fucking this is animals. libertarian. When you, this is fucking when you kill in it, yeah, I said I'm going full blown fucking libertarianism. <laughs> now, so when you kill or fuck so, full animals, blown job. what you're Great. showing is that you're a fucking psycho. No one should want to hang out with you. No one should want to be near you. You should be ostracized. You should be okay. you should be fucking wherever the fuck you want. No one should sell you animals. And if you sign some form of contract in your community, then that has some form of punishment for doing such a thing, then you should face face that whatever okay. that is that you sign. I would like to immediately respond to this. The okay, so basically no. Like human beings are, as far as I can tell, because I'm not a particularly religious person, they are derived of animals. We all had, you know, some level of ancient ancestor that we all derive from, et cetera, et cetera. We're all probably formed from abiogenesis or whatever. So you can put animals on a scale of IQ and EQ, where some animals are deserving of more moral consideration than others. So for instance, I think a dog would be of more moral consideration than a cockroach. But at the same time, to not acknowledge that it's not a life or that it has impact on the environment or your social structure or anything like that, like to just say that humanity is divorced from nature is fucking cope and horseshit. And it's part of the reason why we treat the fucking natural world like a fucking. Okay, well, I mean, you basically said that they're not deserving of moral consideration. So I, I think that's fucking crazy. They're not moral agents, right? There, there, there is an objective. What, what do you mean by moral stand. agent? Because basically, as far as I know, moral, able, they moral can't make moral decisions. decisions. I think dog. I think fucking some animals can absolutely make moral decisions. They just make moral decisions within their own frame. <laughs> okay, no. I mean, don't I don't. I don't think decisions. that's true. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> no, well, you don't think a minute. dog. You don't think that dogs can make moral decisions about no. what's good or bad? No. Okay, I don't think. I don't think dogs. Dolphins. I don't think dogs dolphins. have the intellectual. Here's an example. Here's an example. Dolphins, 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 dolphins might. Here's an example. Actually, dolphins are dolphins are Let me let me give an example. Human beings. Let me give an example. Great people. Let me give an example. Intelligence doesn't matter. IQ doesn't matter. G factor doesn't matter. I'm going to give an example, okay? Let's say it's um uh let's say it's like um uh, a ferret or something, right? And the ferret obviously they have children and they're very attached to their children, but if there's a food shortage, they might eat their children to survive through the winter, right? Cats will do the same thing, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, so will humans sometimes, so yeah, I mean, yeah. True. So, so these are like moral decisions that the that the animal has to make, right? That's not a moral it's decision. Not a moral. That's they yeah, have that's an instinct. They have an ins. They have a maternal okay. instinct, yeah. right? And then that maternal instinct is overridden by hunger, and then they eat the and then they eat the fucking baby. Wait, if 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 animals could be moral, they'd have to be able to philosophize, though, right? Well, you'd have to be they capable have to have the, of understand the deductive of racing reasoning and then you'd at the very least need to be able to prove in order to in order to acknowledge them as a moral agent their ability to make like valid propositional yeah most humans can't philosophize what are you guys talking about every every human this seems like every no no, you guys are being standard every human has the capacity to understand what philosophy is there is no dog that when you sit him down and try to explain murder is wrong dog is going there's no dog that would ever be able to understand that (laughs) Look, I'm going full blown. You don't think that the, I'm, I'm don't think that the ferret feels bad after eating its own left, kids? I'm going full blown leftist here, and I'm going to say morality is a social construct. It is. A yeah, social so we should construct. we should be able to yeah. 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 it's, it's not it's not about <laughs> it being a social construct. It's just that an animal does not have the capacity to even address or or contend with that question, right? Now, I, I you can think that you can think that animals are not moral agents, and also think that. You shouldn't be able to like have sex with animals or torture animals. Yeah. You, these things are not necessarily incompatible, right? But just it's completely mm-hmm. ludicrous to say that like a dog has a, a conception of morality. That's not true at all. What, but is are, there not? Okay, wait, so wait, a minute, wait, 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 w
how they survive in packs in communities and whether or not they're pro-social or anti-social. Just because you can't conceptualize their moral system from the mind of a human doesn't mean that there isn't pro-social and anti-social anim animal behaviors that are good or bad for them as a species. Yeah, but, for but instance, doing, like, but doing, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You just said it was ridiculous. This is Wait, 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 wait. Let's let Connor points go and then we'll go to Becky after Connor points. For instance, you can say it's rawly natural or instinct or whatever, but like 12 foot fucking grizzly bears that are fucking, you know, half a fucking ton, they commit infanticide in order to propagate their genes. And as a result, they reduce the quality of the gene pool. That's part of the reason why we cull them out of the population. So just because like there would be a weight if you were a bear, which is an animal, which by the way, you're a fucking animal. So I don't know why you're separating yourself from fucking nature. Like, That's pro-social pro and anti-social behaviors. Shit. Okay, what? animals can have pro and antisocial behaviors, but there is no uh -huh. animal that has a stance independent reason for doing a thing. That is the thing that makes humans How the unique. How fuck do you that... know that? Okay. How do you know that? Okay, because okay, there's no dog that does something it does not want to do. Right? Does that I mean, of course we they can They don't do shit agree they with don't want to do all the time. Do you have a dog? I I'm confused. Okay, so you're telling me there's a dog that does a thing that it does not want to do for moral reasons. Give me an example. Like, what's a thing that a dog wants oh, to do? I don't. I wouldn't see this as any different from the way that you like. Train it, like if I children. like if I didn't force if I didn't force the dog to go to the vet, it would never go to the vet. I, as a person, don't like going to the doctor, but I go to the uh, doctor, right? A dog okay, would do never make that decision. Children like going to the doctor. Right? No, no, because again, children have the capacity to learn these things. Dogs don't. That's again what makes the difference, you, right? That, but that you're you're painting with such a broad brush. I have no I'm, idea. I am why you're painting with the, the broad brush that animals cannot make moral decisions. I'm I am painting with that yeah. broad brush. I mean, like, it's pretty reasonable, right? You're, no, can we, can we, I, let's hear from let's hear from Beckett. Let's hear from Beckett. Like, like for instance, like for instance, I've if a dog, if a dog three feels times. Times. like it, not from your well, frame. From no, I understand, frame. You're, you're, but you're saying that the frame of a dog is legitimate as a moral axiom, which it is not, right? A dog is simply no. doing what it wants to do, right? That is That's it. Not it has, true. it has a, it has That's a brain that says we want to eat this person's. You guys like, are, like a okay, okay. has a brain that I says I want to eat this I child. I want to give somebody and it who does just it. came into the chat. That doesn't make it chat. right or wrong okay. or a moral decision. It's just you're, like a thing. Okay, okay, wait a minute. Not even you're, listen, to. you're both arguing okay. past each other because you're using... I feel like I'm not. Connor points is, like, both of you, I don't know how you're even having this debate, which is kind of funny because Connor points is being a, a moral relativist and a consequentialist. And by those definitions, he can say that anything is a moral agent. No, he can't, though, because, like, no. by his by his logic... He can't. Like, animate computer, objects can. No, he can't because, like... By that, by that logic, like you could say, like a computer algorithm is making a moral decision because it does indeed make decisions from problem. its own framework, right? No, I, but that is That's a problem, problem with what Connor is saying, and I just don't. It's not reasonable to say that be a being that can have stance-independent reasons for doing certain things is the same thing as like a dog who all he understands is like I want pets and food and I'm a good boy or like I'm a wild animal dog that wants to go and eat children or something right like these are not well, I, equivalent you know so, moral so is there a specific part of the brain that you believe grants like human beings this total separation from the rest of the animal kingdom I mean I think that human beings for assorted reasons are indeed distinct and special from the rest of the animal kingdom yeah Okay so so please tell me like the the part of like the brain or the body or the le le like what what part of our physiology that's a, that's a, that's like a, that's creates a, that's morality a, that's a dumb question already, because now you're, you're why is it a dumb question in, because you're entering in okay. an arbitrary knowledge of I'm not asking I'm, it's not arbitrary right? As it's opposed, not arbitrary at all yes more, yes you, yes it is do, do yes I have it is to you're Google wrong the term fucking moral let's, let's, you fucking wait a minute let's let why are you why are you you're interrupting me Let's let it well, let it why is that retarded? I'm answering why it's retarded. Well, look, uh -huh. all, you, look. It, it's independent. It's independent hey, of the part Jesus. of the brain that does the function. Uh -huh. that, okay, so I would just talk about philosophy, so, not neuropsychology. I, I would just appeal to. So again, I, I think that when people, you know, are, are studying consciousness and neuroscience, I mean, these things are somewhat unanswered questions to the idea of like what what is the thing materially you know physicalistically or whatever the fucking you know adverb is that makes the human experience unique right all that i would say is that it appears that human beings have a somewhat unique ability to go beyond their own instincts and 
personal short-term desires, which animals do not have. Now, the, the physiological reason as to why that's the case is yet to be discovered. But of course, you can compare how animals live in the wild and how humans live, and we can see very, very unique and clear differences in our levels of intelligence, our levels of self-inspection, uh, uh, um, um, introspection, I should say, and our ability to contend with like greater than thou moral questions of like what is right and wrong. A bear, a dog, a dolphin, they, they do not have the ability to do this. Even the smartest animals on earth are not at all equivalent in capacity and in you know current action to uh, to to humans. It's just not the case. You got you guys keep being dismissive without knowing what the fuck you're talking. Yeah, about. I, I I'm like, really confused as to why you got these. I, I, I wasn't dismissive. Like, I just answered directly. Wait, was. You, li you literally okay. said something that's Everybody, not correct. shut up! Everybody, Everybody, shut up! Shut up! Okay, sorry. Um, this is how I moderate. I'm okay, so um, I'm going to throw it to Beckett because he's been trying to get in uh, for a while. Just give him like two minutes, okay? Not even two minutes. One minute, okay? One minute, okay. Beckett. Hurry the fuck up. Okay. You don't have to hurry. So, so from like. From a moral standpoint, you've got you've separated morals out from everything else, but we know that animals can build like companion uh, companionships, friendships. They can feel emotions. They can get depressed. They can get like loads of other things. Uh, like, not moral action see... lobsters. No, 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 hold on, let me finish. Shut up, shut up. But there, but there are like moral actions that we would like. We're applying like quite complicated frameworks and saying, well, animals don't fully understand them. But at the same time, like things like elephants, for example can take yeah. actions against their own self-interests uh, for, like, the good of the herd. You can see, like, there's a case where, like, there was an elephant who was referred to as, like, a terrorist mm. um, by park rangers because it would actively go after, like, tribes and everything else against the rest of the herd because of other, like, in, uh, other things that had happened to it through its life. Whales will put themselves in danger to protect humans, for example. And we can see multiple animals take actions that put themselves at risk to save people or to protect people. Now you can say that animals may not have like a full understanding of like complicated philosophical theories, but unless you're saying that there's some sort of like link um, between like God, God and man, or some like greater moral truth that humans have access to, does it matter if animals are taking actions that are objectively good or bad and seem to be making those decisions? Oh. Because you're just you, the way you talk about animals is almost like automatons. Like they don't need to have higher moral reasoning necessarily, but they, they do seem to have the reasoning. ability to make choices that like they're not just like. Uh, they're not just input. Let me explain. Input, output let me explain the let me yeah. explain the difference between our arguments, right? So here's the problem: is that you you appear, and I and, and I know I'm strawmanning a little bit, but I'm I'm trying to be as good faith as possible. From my perspective, you appear to be anthropomorphizing the the actions that they take and saying because those actions are based in self sacrifice or some form of like altruism that we can see from the outside, this appears to be a moral decision. And what I am saying is that morality does not come from the behavior that you exhibit. Morality comes from your capacity to reason. It is, it is your ability to, make, to, to be able to reason, to be able to make valid propositional statements, to be able to determine what is right or wrong that makes you a moral agent. Because now we know that that behavior is done because of your capacity to reason and to be able to see in the world and make decisions that you know are right or wrong. If there is some instinct that an animal, that a dog has for its owner, right, to protect it, it doesn't matter if it does something that is self-sacrificial. That's not a moral decision unless the animal has the capacity to know that it is a moral decision. To know yeah, that you li you're literally assuming a level of rationalization and not explaining it biologically. You're saying no, there's but, some no. massive well, no, biological look, 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 difference listen, between listen. humans and their capacity to reason. <laughs> I never said that. You interjected that. Reason you, all interject, the time. No, you interjected Hunter. that. What, no, you interjected that. What I am saying uh, is it is possible that we could discover certain animals are moral agents and that we're incapable of being able to determine that they are rational actors, right? It is possible, for example, that whales or dolphins or maybe even elephants are indeed moral agents, but there's no evidence to suggest that simply because they there's engage so in behavior. Much evidence. No, there isn't. There's no evidence of rationality and the ability to make valid propositional statements what? and argue. What is okay, can, I, can I ask a question? Scott? You, you Scott, don't, you don't question? even observe the natural world. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Can I, can I ask a question? Because like, let's, like, let, let's take it from like an Aristotelian point of view and say that there are higher and lower sort of forms of like pleasure or virtues, all those things. And most people like engage in those lower forms. Um, 
is there like points where like people like basically then filter themselves out at certain points in their lives? Because if you're going to like make bad moral decisions without even really thinking about the fact you're making bad moral decisions, like this is a common thing people say, like you ask somebody, why did you do this really fucking dumb thing or this terrible thing? Like, oh, I don't really think about it. So if people aren't recognizing those moral choices or like they, they lack capacity um, for whatever reason, like on a mental level, to make those moral choices, do those people stop being human? Do they suddenly become there's, animals if they can't two, rationalize? There's there's two separate questions here, right? One is an individual choose has the capacity for reason and chooses to make for some godlike power and or like to to shut off the ability to reason when they make decisions, right? And so that is that is someone that is committing acts of aggression knowingly, right? That is someone that is evil. That is someone that is committing wrongs of some sort, right? That's that's not they don't lose their rational capacity just because they choose not to engage. Have you in, been to in, Walmart? In rationally, right? Um, irrelevant. So the second one you're asking is what is it? What happens to someone that's let's, let's say mentally deficient? right? Someone has brain damage, right? And they're incapable of rationality, right? Well, they are still humans. They belong to a property cluster of a species of people that has the capacity for reason, but for whatever reason, right? I, I understand the alliteration there, but for whatever reason, they've lost their capacity. And so they need to be assigned some form of custodian or guardian to take care of them because they no longer have the capacity to consent right? They've yep. lost the ability to consent because they no longer have the capacity to reason. And are we don't they treat diminished people like moral that. Agents? Like, yes, they are. And that's how we yes. treat them. Right? So could because... there be a spectrum of moral agents and could there be different fucking moral systems? Well, no, because no. I didn't answer in a spectrum. I answered in a binary to say that they're not right. moral agents. And that's, that's how it's regulated, right? If someone is like criminally insane, we don't throw them in the same jail as people who we do not find to be criminally insane because we are saying societally that this person is not a moral agent the way that we would understand it. This person has something wrong with them to where they do not understand what is right and wrong. And so we are going to regulate their interaction with regular society differently from how we would regulate someone who does have moral agency and commits a robbery or a murder or a rape or whatever that is. That's how we currently regulate situations like that. Okay, I think you guys are being insanely dismissive of other living creatures, and I don't give a fuck if you eat them, or if you fuck them, or if you fucking deep fry them, or whatever the fuck you do. I'm just saying, I would ask you to reevaluate the way that you look at other species. Because I think that they're, like, so for instance, there, there was uh, just a video the other day, literally on my timeline, bear sees a raven drowning in its pool. It doesn't have to make an action. It doesn't have to do anything. It can just stay neutral, say, hey, that's another species. I don't give a fuck about it, whatever. But through some level of rationality, you could compare it to that of a retarded child. It chooses to fish the bird out of the water because it sees another animal in distress. And instead of killing it, which you would expect it to do out of some level of base instinct, it simply walks away and allows the bird to dry itself off and fly away. Now, you can say that's not human rationality you can say that's some level of lower rationality you can say that it's animal rationality you can say whatever the fuck you want but there was still a thought process in that animal's head to choose to save a life and to be merciful towards that life so i don't care if you say that humans are on a 100 spectrum of morality and that bear is operating on 0.01 percent level of morality I don't give a fuck, but that was still a moral action with multiple choices, some action. of which go against instinct. Yeah, but you're just, you're just because you can, Wait, just on. because you... No, but Connor, you're the one using a human framework to determine mm -hmm. that that interaction was a moral decision or not. The reality is, I think that well, what Scott and I would say... Pressure hold on, let me, let me, I let, think that human let me frameworks finish, are right? evolutionary so, pressures too. Well, let me finish, right? So I think that what Scott and I would say about that interaction is that the, the bear, in, you know, if there's a video of this happening, the bear indeed decided to take this raven out of the river and because of the result of that action, the raven didn't drown and stuff. All that Scott and I would say is that I mean, sure, it's great that a raven didn't drown. It's just that the bear is not thinking in its head, what is the morally righteous thing to do, right? There is no capacity for the bear to do that. It was just simply an instinctual you thing. You have no idea. You have, you have okay, no like, idea. You um, have no idea equally if you're saying No, no I, I do. I think it's more... Okay, 
is no, 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 seriously, I'm gonna, allowing... can I just walk you through this really quick? So the thing is, there is no benefit to saving the bird for the bear. Zero benefit. And if it was just an instinctive agent, it might as well let it drown, or it might as well eat it. Oh, there's free food. Let's eat it. You, you can do things that are not to your benefit, but that aren't moral actions. For instance, like there's okay. a scene in The Mandalorian where a robot sacrifices okay, I, I feel, I feel like It's I'm a fucking a robot. Like, okay, the main question that I would ask you is why are you separating yourselves from the rest of living things? Because I can make I, okay, propositional so not, statements. Not, not from the rest of living oh, things. Oh, wow. There could be you an can alien verbalize species. them. Amazing. That, Okay, there, so there could what? be an alien, like physical alien species that is of higher intelligence and can similarly be considered moral agents. It's not any living thing. It's just that all that I'm saying, which is disagreement with Scott, is that something can not be a moral agent, but you can still care about how you cater to that thing, right? I, I think that animal rights laws it doesn't are disagree with me, right? Oh, I thought you said I, that I, people I, should I be able to bullshit. buy in, like, I, th I think this is cope, and you no. have no reason I said, why you fucking I said that you don't have. No, no, I'm but Connor, okay, Connor, I'm Connor, saying you don't have Connor. a right to legislate that. Mm -hmm. that you really could, quick, Fabian. The covenant community Connor. could be not Connor. accept that in a bunch you're, of stuff. You're saying, you're saying, Connor boy, you don't know that a bear doesn't have morality, right? To which all that I would say is that I, I don't, I don't recall you doing any studies about how a bear is definitively proven to have some level of higher conscious thought of morality. Like how obviously we're both that? speculating here, right? How would no, you prove that? Real. No, but okay, Connor, you're asking me to prove a negative. That's a completely ridiculous proposition, right? I think uh, it's, okay. the burden would be on, on you to prove it. How now, would you prove no, it? No, and, really and quick. Then prove I, the I, no, no, I start, literally start, just brought up a scenario us. in which an animal acted in a way that was not conducive to raw right. fucking instinct, and, and on top of that, and, it involves some level of thought not true. process. No, but I brought not true. up no, but you did. But you refused it to contend with. It has a brain, with, you fucking idiot. No. Are no, you no, serious? But true. <laughs> just because some, something, something has a nervous person. system doesn't make it a moral no, agent, listen, right? A, listen, a fucking you're, single you're, cellular you're, organism, right? I, dude, no, I'm well, hold on. Just, because I literally don't think that you guys understand. Wait, Connor, let me ask Connor, something. No reason, Connor, shut, Connor, up, Connor, shut, shut up, 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 I, I'm not. You're refusing to answer any of my examples. I, what, I what's have up? A question. Ask me a question. I have a question. Okay. Uh -huh. How, Connor Boy, how could I prove to you that, like, animals are acting morally or something? Or yeah, I honestly morals? don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a, a scientist or anything like this. I'm sure that's, there's people with more refined opinions on that. I'm not sure. But, you know, I literally, I, uh, wait, 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 shut up. How do we prove that any human is 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 uh, acting based on like morals? Because there are human beings that have stance independent reasons for doing certain things, and I don't think that that's the case with animals. How would you prove that an animal why. has a stance yeah, independent? No, yeah. You're an animal. Why? You are not okay, separate. So why? I, okay. So con okay. Connor, I get that you could classify everyone as an animal, humans or mammals, stuff like that. I'm not disagreeing that we're part of the animal kingdom. All that I am saying is that when we're talking about moral agents who have moral agency, that humans have that and all other animals on Earth appear to not have that. Of course, like Fabian Why? said, it could be the case... Because what are you talking you, about? You're there are no saying, examples. You're word I've answered there are no, all there, of this. There are, there, no, Connor. I've Connor, already told Connor, you. Connor, Connor, I'm baby, listening. One second. Connor, there are no examples that you can provide to me of uh -huh. an animal doing something that is independent of their stance doing it. There's no examples of that happening. The bear stance? saved the raven. Stance? What, what, stance what, what word are you using? Can I please okay, okay, answer describe this? Describe something that you'll understand. Stance independent is just the idea that I might do something that is against what my initial instinct or opinion on that thing is because I feel like it is the right thing to do. That is not something that animals have the capacity to do. It seems to be the case. Oh, do you know that? Okay, Connor, I'll ask you this example one last time. If you refuse to answer uh -huh. it, I don't know what to say. If okay. a robot sacrifices itself to save humans because its programming leads it to that conclusion, is that robot a moral agent? Okay, no, because it doesn't have the capacity to make okay, the choice. Okay, so all, so all I am saying is that the programming of an animal, of course, we're just cells and organisms and stuff, right? The programming of an animal leads it to make decisions, right? And that there animals are animals no, are robots. No, radical take. There, there's no, dude, no, that, but there's that's no, literally there's no, there's no, what you're saying. Hold on, hold on, listen, listen, no, Becky, I have to finish. I'm not even able to explain the thing. No, okay, I just have to finish the sentence, right? 
the, the, the point is, is that an animal's programming, it's physiological programming, does not seem to include any self-perception. I understand. I'm saying human experience is unique. Animals do not have any sort of unique self-perception or rationality or ability to reason or make moral choices. They just do the things they want to do. That is not morality. Okay. That just happens I to be some videos that are cute sometimes. I literally brought up a Can counter example. Okay, yeah, go engage ahead. Engage with this. Okay, so it's very simple. Okay. If you repeat yourself, I'm just going to get The only way... Well, just, just wait, wait a minute, okay? Because uh -huh. I did already answer it. So, in your example, you have a bear. It sees a crow drowning, right? Uh -huh. You're saying because it engaged in behavior that you find peculiar and that goes against what you, moralizing onto the bear, attempting to understand whether or not the bear has morality, right? Because it doesn't seem to benefit the bear. Therefore, this is an evidence this is evidence that seems to suggest that there is some level of, of morality in the decision making Altruism process. Altruism or something, the, yeah. Right. So here's the problem with that. It is what the only way that we can prove that an agent is a moral actor is if we are able to communicate in some fashion with the with the species, right? And determine that via some form of communication that it is capable of making valid propositional statements. Once we know that it is capable of making valid propositional statements, they know that they can know that when they say something, it is true. And when they say something false, it is false. Then we recognize that they have the capacity for logical inferences. In the example that you gave, it could just as easily be that the bear was acting on some maternal instinct, right? That it happened to layer over top of the crow, right? It has mirror neurons, right? And mirror neurons is where we theorize that empathy comes from. It has, it, it engages in play as a young child. And that play is, is possibly what first developed okay, our moral I, I understand what you're saying. In the I brain, you, right? Uh -huh. And so there's no proof that, that it didn't simply do a thing because it was programmed to do the thing. And it okay. layered on its own maternal instincts onto okay, this bird. I, I, I've and heard you thing. for the past 30 seconds. I understand completely. How are you different? All you've said so far is that you can articulate your morality and therefore it exists. That's all you've said. You the ability to articulate stop, morality. Stop, stop. You nor mm -hmm. Econoboy have articulated to me why the human species, something in a living we animal have. with We've physical proven. structures. No, okay, so what is the biological difference between you and all the other li living creatures that I, makes you uniquely capa capable of morality? I've already, I've already no other living creatures. This is a, no, this you is haven't. No, no, you haven't. Yes, I have. You literally yes, have. There is there's, because there's, you can articulate it. That's the listen, dumbest fucking listen, answer you listen, possibly could have given listen, me. Listen, you keep calling me dumb, but like you're you're too I don't think you're dumb. To be able to I don't out think you're dumb on. at all, Fabian. That's why you're, you're not me getting off. what we're saying. Listen. I understand listen, what you're saying. It's just wrong. Listen, listen, listen. The okay. ability to articulate to it is proof that we do have that capacity. That's so because dumb. I have. If you do, that's so, not if you do something, if I listen do something, for God if damn I second. do something, I am listen shooting people in the face right second. now. Do you think that if I'm shooting people in the face, I need to be able to articulate it in order to be able to shoot people in the face? Is there any other human behavior that you're, solely you're exists? Adding, after you're adding, it's being you're adding described? extra layers of stupidity to this. I'm um, fucking. Can, 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 can I can I can I can I jump in? Question, because because no, because I. Can no, because you can't no keep talking about biological good. functions no, at the lower listen. levels. I'm not talking about biological functions. Connor just wants to bring it up, and it's an irrelevant fucking point. Our knowledge of what function. portion what of what are you talking about? The, our knowledge of what in the brain gives us this capacity mm -hmm. does not argue for or against the capacity itself. The proof is my ability to prove to you that I have the capacity for reason. I've already stated that uh -huh. multiple animals may have this capacity, but we cannot go off of the base assumption that they have reason. Why are you presuming because, that they don't? Why are you presuming they don't? Because I don't presume a tree has morality and yet it is a mm -hmm. living being. Right, it the, seems they, it is the onus. Okay. Right, the onus is on the fucking on on us on our ability to be able to, to determine or discover if a species does indeed have the capacity for reason. Until then, they're okay. assumed to be not I, a moral act. I, I think there's literally so much biological evidence pointing out that like there's so many creatures that have way more fucking intelligence than anybody fucking gives them credit for. I don't know why. Intelligence you're, you're is irrelevant. 
that doesn't equal morality. That's yet. so dumb. Yeah. That's so dumb. It's okay, not can dumb. I, can I ask you a question? Econoboy, Econoboy, question. You said, What's does a robot idea? have, like, does a robot have morality? If we're, At what point does something like artificial intelligence develop morality? Yeah, so He's it's not, not be that, able to answer it's, that because it's a fucking well, automata. I, I actually was going to answer it to be fair, but um, so uh, you know, obviously, it, it's similar to asking like, at what point does a biological creature have morality, right? Um, you know, so well, I, I'm I think using that they're <laughs> Go on. right. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, Just it's humans. not a bad Only point, humans. right? What I did, I didn't say that either, Connor. What I said was that you could very well present me with a being or even an animal <laughs> on Earth that does indeed have this capacity. I just don't think that that exists currently, right? Now, what with regard to computers, I think the answer is very similar, which is that if you presented me a, a, a scenario where uh, even if something was just you know lines of code that it had an ability of self conception and morality and reason and rational thought, then yeah, I would be perfectly comfortable saying that that was a, a moral agent. I'm, I don't have a strict stance that, oh, because not human, therefore not morality. It's it's just that there's that, not great evidence. That's all I've heard to... for the past 20 minutes. That's all no, I've it isn't. You, you've you've been just choosing... been screaming and not yeah. listening. I have a I mean, question. If, if, if that's all you've heard, I'm then listening. you've seriously failed to engage in the points that we've been making. So, it, do you have to have morality to have compassion? Well, it depends um, on how you define compassion. Plenty of species have mirror neurons, right? And so they have the capacity to understand that um, another creature, even not of the tribe, is wounded or in pain. Um, but it, it, it depends on what you mean by compassion, right? So, like, could you maybe define compassion? Um, I guess, okay, so I guess it kind of falls into what you're saying because I would say, like, um, a female of one species, um, adopting the, a, like a dying baby of another species, um, as its own, you know, because it knows it's dying and it knows it's not mm -hmm. one of them, but it still takes them in and will take care of it and make sure that it's okay. Um, you wouldn't call that, com you wouldn't call that compassion. You would call that like, what did you say? Mirroring neurons. <laughs> Yeah, they're just yeah, biological I mean, robots. Right, like they're not they're not making a moral decision. There's just an instinct sure. took over it's to take they're care just doing, of them. They're just doing yeah. the thing they want to do. Yeah, they're just biological right. robots. They, they're not thinking Do we, do we make more decisions towards our pets? Because generally speaking, like our pets play off um, kind of those instinctual things. Oh, like kit kittens, for example, like, um, like, and lots of baby animals will like, Oh. Uh, place like layers on top of for the way that we connect to them, yeah. and like with yeah, pets humans, generally, humans like... moralize and anthropomorphize other species all the time. You'd be, you'd, but, but what makes us moral? Like what makes us have a moral framework to get uh, towards them, rather than just doing what say the bear you were arguing the bear was doing with the crow? What makes us like from from a moral perspective, we have the ability to kind of th think in patterns. This is like generally what humans do. We we rationalize the world around us and like. Even reality itself is kind of a shared social experience. Like nothing, nothing beyond a house is a house other than we say it is. So, what makes what makes morality anything more than us rationalizing our base biological instincts? Yeah, that's an important question. So again, I, I've already said this, which is that it's because humans have the capacity to do things that are stance independent. That we do things okay, that are against them. What makes them stance independent? In versus versus the bear. So versus the bear saving the crow. What makes me saving a puppy stance independent? Um, I, well, I guess it would depend on the person. I mean, like for instance, if you if, if you have I don't know if you're a if, if you if you feel like there's a significant risk of uh, per personal harm or you know some some potential moral slight by saving this puppy, then of course you know that's a stance independent reason to. Save the puppy, I guess. So, but, so the rich, so morality that's you know, like, is going to be. But you're, you're like, you're, wait, hold on, but, but, but you're like uh, five steps down the road already, right? So at some point, maybe you saw Bambi or something, and you learned that animals dying is a bad thing, and this is why you're going to go save the puppy, right? So the, there were things that happened in your life that trained you uh, to believe that you should save that puppy. Toddlers lack empathy. Children who aren't socialized properly lack like higher, uh, like large amounts of empathy skills. Well, again, they, they have the capacity to build those things. So that's kind yeah, of but, what but, the main argument. But then, is. like, we can train animals to do certain things. Uh, yeah, just like limitations. you were trained to go to the doctor or go to the dentist. 
So, so, and th so my point is, if these are the standards of morality, like, and I say, like, again, I don't particularly have this problem because I believe in God, so I c I've got things to point to. But unless you've got God. something higher to point to, the the more and more in this conversation, I'm like, uh, it sounds like morality no, is just humans that's... justifying the world around them, no, no, and that's that's that's, that's fine. a deeper. Last that's username a deeper in the chat says animals can have morals, territoriality, for example. I don't know what that means. Last. So. It, Last but his name is a, is a moral relativist and an egoist. Uh, like, like. Oh, okay, no, so more, the, more the, the ability to wrong. determine. I think I'm a moral okay, so relativist the, too. The ability to to, I don't even understand how you could link those two things. Like, oh, because we defend territory, that means we're moral agents. I just don't see how those two things are linked, right? I think that and part of it is kind of what. No, okay, I just, so I, I want to, I just want to, I just want we're going to do this thing. If we're going to a system of social rules, correct? I no, I believe, don't I believe know. in some objective uh, morality. That's, that's the so it, the maybe problem. the problem is that mora morality kind of means something. It, it has it sort of a greater meaning to us, bad. but but a lot of creatures in the wild actually have social rules that are understood even beyond the domain of of say like you know what like different packs of of wolves or coyotes, for instance. They understand that there are social rules and territory and such that extend beyond even their pack. So there, there's a system of social rules. Um, I don't think that like one of the things that was said, stated early on by you, Econa boy, which I think is a really important thing is that they're not like philosophizing about this. As far as we know, you know, there's no like philosophizing about like the meaning of those social rules or whether or not those social rules should be what they are or should be evolved or broken, et cetera. So there's something more instinctive mm. about those social rules. Because um, if they could, they would they would like want to change them. But yeah. And they have, so, to have the capability so to want to change. Now, them there's one thing that's kind of gotten me to question and think a lot more about this. Like, I'm undecided on this whole thing about like animals and morality and such. But one of the things that we've noticed and this has been studied extensively <clears throat> is that um, even wild animals, as well as wild animals captive, like in the wild and captive, when um, the conditions that they're in are less um, less stressful and not as survival oriented, their behavior becomes much more dynamic and not as instinctive. And the more that they're pressed for survival, the more instinctive their behavior is, so the more hemmed in the range of their behavior is. And so we'll see like, you know, like otters in a den hanging out with, you know, their kids, with their pups. Um, they actually exhibit a much more broader range of behaviors than when they're Dance outside. And independent behaviors because yeah. their material needs are met. Ooh, yeah. They're not and, acting and on so, instinct as much. And we see that even behavior. more so with animals. And we see that even more so with wild animals who are in captivity. So in that because bear that rescued, in that bear that rescued that drowning crow was in captivity. So that was actually. Probably a, was. Yeah. That was why so they I'm got not, a close picture of it. Yeah. So again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that if environments change, animals won't change their behavior. That's not incompatible with what we've been saying this whole time, right? That's that's right. actually incredibly compatible with what we've been saying this whole time, right? It's just that yeah. again, I don't think that a, like a like a house cat versus a cat in the wild. Um, sure, they're going to act fundamentally differently. Like a house cat's going to have much less survivability skills than a cat in the wild, and like you know, I don't know, cats in the in the house are probably cuter than cats in the wild for a number of reasons. But the point is, is that at no point does that cat start to contemplate. Ah yes, you know what? Is, what is the morally right thing to do today? I guess I'll. You don't know. My, we don't, we know, don't actually owner, right? know for certain. Okay, but right, well, so, I, like we've seen, of us made seen, that claim. We've seen. We said that the feed, burden of proof is on you to prove that before we can consider yeah. the moral agent. And right. we've, already and we've, we've like been like able with some examples with some, of some, animals but, acting in ways that you wouldn't expect but, them to well, act. So with some, that's not really quick. Hold on, hold on. With some creatures, with some creatures like cats, cats, dogs, elephants, and dolphins, as well as gorillas. Um, we have seen, um, yeah, we we have seen uh, feed like internal feedback, neurological yeah, feedback that would give us an understanding that there is some form of reasoning. We just don't know what exactly. Now with dolphins, we can see a lot more because we can communicate with them Jesus. more in more um, diverse ways, sometimes with dogs as well and gorillas. Like with gorillas teaching them sign language, we can get a lot more feedback from them as to 
the potential for reasoning and what they reason about. So for instance, with that gorilla, when they were talking about, you know, why it is that she was sad and she talked about losing her kitty and hoping that her kitty was okay. Um, even though she was, was dead and wondering like where she went to, even though knowing that the kitty isn't around anymore, isn't like physically around anymore. And so the gorilla was wondering like, where does she go to next? Is she going to be okay? And yes, I'm sad because she's gone. And well, so I think, I, and, I think that those are examples of animals feeling feelings, right? I'm not saying that a dog can't be sad or a cat can't be sad. And it's not that we can't empathize with those feelings. Right. But I just, mm -hmm. I just don't think that like a gorilla had a cat and he is, uh, or she's upset that the cat is gone. I don't see how we, we take the leap to, this is an, a moral agent contemplating its morality. Define morality? I, I wouldn't say like no, no, a no, no, moral no. Can, agent. Can, can I would either say... you or Fabian define morality? Um, well, Sorry, I think the it's the ability well, you to distinguish right and wrong. The ability to distinguish right and wrong. It's not even the ability. It's like the analysis of right and wrong. Right. Right. So, that's what I'm saying. So, so, I so don't, you, I don't so think, think an animal can understand what's right and wrong so, for itself? So I don't think... Okay. No, first of all, I don't. What does that even mean? Right or wrong? Answer, right? for okay, so if a if a lion, th this yeah. is another fucking video in which animals are making choices. A male lion <laughs> is trapped by hyenas. It's being hunted by hyenas, and yeah. basically, its partner male lion decides, risking itself in order to save its friend, to go against the pack of hyenas and basically uh, save its friend. Now, there you are said, like 10,000 fucking choices that it could have made inside right? of that stuff. And guess what? There's also choices that would have been very selfish and moral, where it would have basically okay. decided, fuck this guy. I'm going to take so, his spot. Real quick, real I just, no, no, no. Hey, no, no, no. Hold on. Just, all just, impulse. No, no, no. He's I addressing me, and I just want to... Dude, okay, if, you, so, if you just say it's like a biological robot, I'm going to lose no, my shit, and I'm just going to... No, that's it. not what I'm saying. Okay, so <laughs> the point that you're making... Right, if you don't that, agree with me, I'm going to okay. lose my shit, Roger. Yeah, yeah. because okay, literally so, you just said the same shit ten fucking times, okay, and I've, so, I've disagreed with it every time. No, no, because you, you keep on... You wouldn't even have said what you just said if you're understanding what I'm saying, right? Now, to be fair, I could be an incredibly poor communicator. I'm not sure that that's the case, right? But the point is, what you just said, right, is that, okay, take look at this example of a lion who is... Is, is putting itself at in danger, basically, in order to save another lion, right? So you're saying the fact that it put itself in danger is an example of a lion making a moral decision, right? Now, what I am saying is that none of the individual factors of like, oh, this gorilla was sad it lost its cat. Oh, this lion put itself in danger. Oh, this bear saved a raven when it didn't have to. Those are not examples of an animal being able to contemplate and understand what is right and wrong or good and bad. That is just I, I examples of animals doing things they want to question. do. I am going to ask you this question one more time because we have circled on this subject six, seven, eight fucking times. And I've asked you this question each fucking time. You are a creature. You're a primate. You're a monkey. You're a hairless monkey with an IQ above that of average monkeys but you're got a still little left. a living creature, okay? So what biological or phenomenological structure is separate in human beings that caused us to solely be responsible for the contemplation of right and wrong and good and bad okay. behavior? So because whatever, I, hold on, hold on, hold on, yeah. hold on. Before you answer this question, okay. I do not Again, believe that this separation exists. And so far, what I've heard from Fabian three or four times now is the ability to contemplate and articulate it, which you can't prove that they don't contemplate it. And their ability to articulate it is actually, we were just talking about how they can communicate. So basically, okay. your assumption that they don't have moral reasoning is like, why? Okay, Wh so why? again, I, right, you're, you're saying, you're saying, prove a negative, right? Can't, can't, it's not quite, it. it's not... No, it does mean something, already, right? So we've already so, we've already well, given you I'm positive trying, evidence. You just to... didn't like it. Okay, yeah, no, this no, is this actually, is problem. Like, no, we no, can, no, we can, we can, can ask so you like, no. I can't answer it now. Okay. Okay, 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 so wait, 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 once let's, again, let's... okay. So once again, you guys think something is evidence. I and I believe we, Fabian, are saying that is actually not evidence of the thing that you think it is, right? Mm -hmm. Again, because you want it to be able to contemplate and articulate it. No, no, it's no, no. To me, to me, it's less about wrong. 
Okay, can I, can I, can I, can I jump in, please? No, 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 jump in, it. please. I, I still let's, wasn't let's... even able to answer the question. Okay. Right. So again, all I was trying to say, and this will be short, is just that I don't think that those are actually evidences of animals being able to contemplate morality. Um, communication is less, I mean, communication is kind of a subjective thing. I wouldn't quite say articulation or communication. It's more just about their ability to self-actualize and internalize like a, a, a decision of right and wrong, good or bad, right? Now, again, and I'll just, I'll, I, I'll repeat this again, an animal doing a thing that puts itself in danger or a thing it doesn't have to do or um, uh, reacting in a way that shows emotion, those, those are things that certainly exist. They're just not evidences of actual ability to contemplate what is good and bad and right and wrong. That's what all that is I'm the saying. What is the phenomenological or sociological or biological structure that separates right. okay. your ability so, to contemplate yeah. morality yeah. separate from an animal? You have okay. not can I, can I follow, can I follow okay, that up with Connor, a really Connor, simple Connor, example? Just wait, wait, a really wait, wait, simple wait, 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 wait. Okay, yeah, let's get really back at just a, a, a quick Okay, hint. a simple yeah. example, and I'll, so I'll answer the question. If it's right and wrong, let's take something like a dog um taking like understanding that it's been taught that it's been taught trained whatever it's owner doesn't want it to do something and it doesn't take that action and before you say well it knows there are consequences so do humans for all their moral that's, actions that's not what i was gonna say so no no no, no i'm just trying to i'm just trying to close it off I'm just trying to close that one off because i'm not gonna accept it but like if a, okay. if a dog takes an action that either and we see dogs react to knowing when they've done something wrong because, you know, like they do this whole kind of like, oh, oh, shit. Or if dogs are put in a position where they're on their own in a house, for example, and I don't know, someone leaves some food out or something and the dog doesn't take it or the dog doesn't like destroy the house or whatever. Um, are those act are those actions evidence of a dog making a, like a, a, a differentiating between what it understands as right and wrong in a similar way to a small yeah. child would? Okay, so to answer Connor's, I think you asked kind of a separate question. To answer Connor's question, then answer your question. What I would say to Connor's question is, again, uh, just because I can't point to like the part of the brain that shows that we have this ability to contemplate, doesn't mean that that contemplation isn't there and that it's not unique. So that's I think so a very, why very are you fucking that clear. Hold on, why Connor. are you making that assumption, Connor? I just need you to answer this question. Was that a clear answer to your question? Okay, it's a clear answer that you feel like okay. you can't point to a single thing that would well, like dr that would filter out this difference. I'm asking I understand. you, why are you making the presumption I, that, that okay, human beings so are the sole fucking moral I, creatures except I, I for actually, more advanced aliens? So once again, I didn't even say more advanced aliens. All that I've said is that there's not great evidence that other animals that presently exist on this earth are moral agents, okay? Now to answer Beckett's question on the example of a dog, I think it's actually a great example because I think it illustrates my point, which is that you can indeed train a dog to do certain things and you can train a dog in such a way that it feels bad if it does the thing you told it not to do. Right. But to me, that's an example of a dog, in fact, does not have an ability to independently contemplate what is right or wrong. It is only doing what the trainer is telling it to do or training it to do. That is not evidence, again, that a dog is able to self-contemplate independently what is right and wrong or good or bad. But don't most humans do that? Okay, so let me, and plenty let me, of let me engage. Let me engage mm. for just a second. OK, so first of all, you gave another example. So there already is a, a, of the lion protecting the other lion in the pack against hyenas, right? So you said that you were a big fan of evolutionary psychology. Well, there's something called kinship theory, right? Which is the idea that human beings and other animals engage in self-sacrificial behavior that seems to be against, against themselves, not because of, a, not, not per se, because they made a moral decision to do so, but because an instinct towards saving other members of the pack leads to the outcome of their own biological data being, being their own DNA being moved through the tribe. Because just because one lion, right, has a set of genes doesn't mean that they need to propagate those genes by having sex their cousin lion or their brother lion can do, can pass on most of those same genes. And so kinship theory is, is it's very easy that the lion could have the instinct, right? To jump in and try and fight and self-sacrifice so that other, other lions can get away. And that this is something that is programmed into them to do so that more lions survive so that the genes continue to propagate. So there's no evidence there that the lion is engaged in a moral decision. Now, when you said, I, I require articulation and that that is part of it, 
I'm not saying that the, the capacity to reason requires the ability to, to articulate it to other people. What I'm saying is that is the evidence that I am a moral agent, is that I am able to prove to you that I have the capacity for reason, that I understand the laws okay, of then, logic. Okay, then, then I'll literally, I'll drop everything I'm doing right now. I'll stop playing video games. I'll go fucking learn sign language for fucking dolphins. And we'll start talking about like the deeper philosophies of life. And I'll see if I can get you a treatise from a, many a dolphin, tried. an octopus, or many have tried. How are you being dismissive? Almost all of the evidence about fucking living creatures is the fact that they're infinitely more fucking intelligent than people give them credit for. How are Again, you being intelligence dismissive? Intelligence doesn't matter. Intelligence is irrelevant. I, I don't understand how you don't these, think these things are correlated. I also don't understand how you're disconnecting human morality from biology. That's the other fucking thing. You're like, it's, it's just this abstraction. We just come from at it from nowhere. How do you know that this did, isn't I a never fucking did that. 10 billion IQ of fucking survival I never, instincts I never did that. participating in this conversation? You're making, you're making claims that are simply untrue because you are lying about what I'm saying. Insanely I just dismissive. don't understand. You and Econo Boy have been insanely dismissive the entire time. I really just, have no no something insane. Insane. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, I just, just don't understand. Insane is not an argument. I just, just don't understand. Attack. I just don't yeah, understand. I didn't call you insane. I called you insanely dismissive. Uh, if you were insane, sorry, you wouldn't star, be a moral I'm talking over women. I'm making a moral choice about talking over women. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, I I just don't <laughs> understand how how we've been able to say that humans do this thing when I would argue that most humans don't act from like uh, act out of morals, right? Most humans probably don't That's even give that much thought, right? It's about the capacity. The yeah, capacity yeah, but means that how you have many? The ability but if most to of them, if the most of them of don't, decision. if most of them don't, if most of them don't, then the capacity for most of them, we don't even know if most of them have the capacity. So every most every do, human, barring ev well, yeah, every every human, barring people who are, are 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 born with psychopathy or or born with some incredible mental defect, have the capacity to do these things, right? It, it is environmentally. Uh, determined to a great extent, obviously, what will you actually engage with with your capacity to do those things, right? So it's some, I mean, it, and this is a thing that I, th I feel like most liberals should be able to agree with that, you know, most people have the capacity to get good grades and get a good job and all that stuff, but there's a lot of environmental factors that can amend what your sort of top level uh, potential is, right? Which is, these are all compatible uh, stances, I think. I, I I can agree that like environment can um, uh, influence somebody's ability to engage with things on on different um, on different levels, but I I would say that like if majority of humans aren't really thinking that hard about morality, um, and you're using this argument that um, in capacity. Well, they have I'm the sorry? ability to. That's that's the point. Yeah, he, he, they have he's, the ju ability. he's just saying even if you if even if you sit down a psychopath in a fucking jail cell and you say, hey, can you think about the fucked up shit that you did? They would be able to sit there and think about it. No, a and psychopath be, wouldn't. And... I've already said that. The, 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 the psychopath is a unique example of how we I regulate certain. It. But dogs can. Well, they, dogs they, they, they might know when they've done something bad. It, they'll but... feel guilty. You can see when they feel guilty about something, right? They, they're just arguing that that's pure instinct and it doesn't have anything to do with any deeper level thought process. Okay, okay. Bears killing their young, right? There's this this bear that killed its uh its cub and then killed itself afterwards to to prevent it from suffering. Like that's um. It's just like... raw instinct. Just. Yeah, you know, it, but, robots. but I don't think it, I don't think that's raw instinct because that's like an incredible case, right? It was a it was a bear that was being um, used for um, the, there was like some herbal medicine that they were making out of the bear's um, insides, and they would keep the bears alive. Um, and this bear and had it's just given natural, and it's not in line with the robot instincts that they normally have. Well, they, this bear just, just gave just a cut. Well, they just get, well, let, let me just explain that the bear gave birth. The fact, the fact hey, that wait. you have an inability to respond the way that we would shows that you have not been able to engage with what we hey, think. Hello, that's not is a talk right over there. Stardust Minute? Sorry. It is. Okay. This is our show now. Fuck the, you. The bear, mm -hmm. the bear gave birth to a, to a baby. Look. And the bear knew that A it human already... baby? No, not a human <laughs> baby. Oh my God. I'm going to fucking. I'm you should have said a couple of Stardust. Goddamn. Okay, so the bear um, already living and suffering, uh, you know, throughout its life, right, decides to break out of its cage, kill its cub, and then kill itself, right? Um, I would say that that's like a, a bear operating and making a decision that it's like, 
it, it would be it it would be wrong to allow this uh cub of theirs live the this life of suffering. Yeah, I would say that actually, in my view, that if if I'm not at all familiar with this story, but if there is evidence that a that a that a bear, uh, I guess you're saying. Uh, it was able to escape from its captivity, get into its cub's captivity, kill its cub, and then I guess I don't know how a bear would kill itself, but uh, kill itself. Then um, that would lead me to think that they are, they do have some level of moral contemplation. Yeah, but that's not it itself is. An abuse, an an know, abuse know, bear uh, uh, strangled cub to death and then killed herself by running into a wall after a life of hell in bile farm, um, and. Uh, uh, so yeah, basically this um, this this mother uh, broke out of her cage um, uh, after hearing her cub in distress, and then um, she strangled it to death, and then uh, and then she killed herself. So that that what sounds I would, like what I would give what I would give you is that that could be an example of some amount of you know moral contemplation. I think um, I'd be interested to, to know how you would test that, but. Uh, in general, I think, again, that's compatible with my stance that it could be the case that animals have this contemplation. I just don't think that there's great evidence that they do. Can I ask okay, you a question? Okay, okay, but... Yeah, but there's, but there's great... No, no. Uh, like, is there... It, it has the capacity now, too, right? Like, we know that some bears have the capacity. So oh, our, eyeballs, know, they know, our eyeballs... Do they know that they'll die our, if they hurt themselves hard enough? If they, if they our, injure themselves hard enough, they, do they know they'll die? I just, well, I mean, the that, point that is that the bear that doesn't killed. Say anything about the, the, yeah, the point the point is the bear killed its cub. It strangled its cub to death because they the bear knew it would be wrong to to let this baby uh, live the same life as them. I just have no, a quick no, question. No, no, like our 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 eyeballs right are evolved from the capacity to see light underwater, and so they're not the greatest things for seeing right? Like throughout the evolutionary chain, like there are better ways that the eyeball could have evolved, but sometimes there are things that aren't necessarily good about any portion of our biology, right? Because we're, we, we have what we have. And so this is even more so true about the brain. So just because a bear kills themselves doesn't mean that they're making any moral thought about this. Like, Sadness, for example, or the desire to killing do itself, it killed a whole its bunch. Baby. Okay, right. Well, I think again, all the all the yeah, go on. Sorry. Even killing its baby, it it doesn't matter. Like you have to prove in order to prove that something is a moral agent that they may are, that they're making moral decisions, right? And and so there are all types of things in the brain that can go haywire that can make you do crazy things that that seem different or don't seem to line up with what, what you might assume to be in, in need of self-preservation or preservation of your genetic material, et cetera. Like people get angry, right? And they murder other people. And that's not hear, actually good um, for their would, goals, right? Yeah, well, I but like hear... that's evolved from a capacity that has other benefits. And so we have this, this dead dumb shit that makes us super fucking angry and kill people. That doesn't mean that like, that we're evolved to like randomly murder but it's people, killing its or that like child anger to take does it out of suffering. Uh, Ginger, what was but no? What was, but you don't Ginger, know. That. What were, Ginger, you what know were Ginger, what were you going to ask? Child. Shut up, Ginger. It's, I it's, wanted it's, to ask a question. Up Shut up. Actually, I actually think I get should go first. Um, oh, at this point, I'm just going to ask whether Scott thinks he has the ability to morally reason. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> no, uh, no I'm kidding. Ginger, kidding, you I'm go kidding, ahead. Kidding, kidding. That was me. I apologize. No, shut up, Beckett. It's Ginger's turn to ask the question. Now I feel bad, but I was just gonna ask: Did did the bear use a tool to strangle its baby, or did it use its bare hands? Um, it Jeez. used its bare hands. Nice. Bare hands. Yeah. Nice. It used its bare hands, yeah. Oh, okay. Got him. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! Yeah. Is the capacity to use tools uh, a sign of reason? No. Why would it be? <laughs> yeah, because it, because you're working out something about the world around you. Why is it? Wouldn't it be? Because like that's not a natural thing. Things like chimps and corvids use tools, which are things that like we use as signifiers of their toddler-like intelligence. So and and ultimately, like tools are extensions. Yeah. I think there are also I, I, like yeah, really interesting. I, it's, it's, a sign of complex, it's a sign of complex fault. 
of thought. It's not then what the fuck is rationality, dude? You are triggering the fuck out of me. No, but obviously, like, I would say there's there's obviously a correlation between a being. If I if I had all the beings in the universe, I would imagine there's a, a correlation between intelligence and your ability to contemplate morality. But it's it's just that one doesn't necessarily get you the other, right? So the ability to like use a tool or build a tool doesn't necessarily mean that. You're gonna think to yourself, "Ah, oh, yes. What's what's the most morally righteous thing to do with this tool?" Right? It might just be, "Oh, it's you know the thing that I use to get more food or whatever it is." Right? I don't know. Okay. Well, no, yeah, but, but I, no, it I, is. I do be cool usage. Cool like, usage is evidence in favor of reason. Son of a bitch. It's not proof, right? Because it shows some level of complex thought. Certain primates using leaves, right, uh, near an ant hill, as a means of getting l the ants to collect onto the leaf and then eat multiple ants, right, via that usage of a tool, shows that there is like some capacity in the brain to understand that this can lead to this that leads to this, right? Um, but it doesn't necessarily make them a moral agent. It's just evidence that there might be some rudimentary capacity for reason. But it doesn't it doesn't mean that they're moral agents, which is the original kind of situation here. Like they may have some level to reason, um, but they may not. Right. It could be it could be an evolved thing. It could be like we don't really know that. Um, so, Doobie, yeah, there's tons question? of. Sorry, oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Doobie. I'm curious because um, there's a really famous. Uh like a uh, study that they did. And I think that there's a video of it um, where there's two monkeys, right? And they, they set up the system where the monkeys need to give the researcher a token. And in exchange for the token, the monkey gets like a grape, right? Like a grape and a, a cucumber. And they have these two, these two monkeys side by side mm, in, in two different monkeys. cages. And yeah, one of them, they, yeah, we know. Yeah, so what? So, so, so the, one of the monkeys is getting uh, lesser rewards than the other, right? And this monkey eventually flips the fuck out, gets really mad, shaking the cage because he's not being treated fairly, right? So do you think this, this where do you think that might come from? If it's not some kind of sense of fairness or, and the fact that he ends up, he ends up yeah. throwing, he ends up throwing the treat that he does get because he's so angry that he's being treated unfairly. Right, so where does this kind of like so, like anger come from? If it's yeah, not, I've seen that video. Yeah, so how I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I don't, I don't think I don't think I don't I don't think that that uh, monkey is thinking to itself, "This is an unjust and unfair situation." I think that that monkey thinks to itself, um, "I like grapes better than what I got," and this monkey got a grape, and I right, want but they a grape. they repeated this with many different monkeys, right? And they found they got similar results. Right, so it wasn't just that this specific monkey had a taste for for grapes over cucumbers, right? Um, and they even found differences well, I, in in the, the the male monkeys and the female monkeys, and in like which were more likely to uh, to do that, right? To, well, to react that way. I, well, yeah, but I would I wouldn't be surprised if almost every monkey would prefer like a like a grape to a cucumber because again, just physiologically, there's a lot more sugars and you know things that would release. Mm -hmm. You know, serotonin stuff in a grape than a cucumber, right? So I, I just, it just doesn't. Again, there's. Wait, so if I, I, so I to be clear, so so if I were to Google it right now, and find that actually, um, some monkeys were really angry because they were getting uh, 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 grapes instead of cucumbers, and they wanted cucumber, right? Or they were getting like one grape versus two slices of cucumber. Um, what would you say to that? Yeah, I mean, if, if there was a scenario where two monkeys really preferred cucumbers instead of grapes, and one monkey got a grape, and the monkey that got, uh, or I'm sorry, one, one monkey got a cucumber, and the other monkey got a grape, and the monkey that got a grape was, like, angry that it didn't get a cucumber, I mean, I feel like that would, you know, perfectly fall within what I'm saying, which is that it just okay, seems like the so, monkey wants cucumbers. So either way, so either way, you're, like, dismissing, like, outright, like, it, like from the start. There's a possibility that this, this, these monkeys are angry, not because they're getting cucumbers or grapes, but because they're not being treated. For like, no, it's, um, it's, not, it's not that what you're fairly. saying, because Connor has also used the, the words of dismissing, right? It's, it's not that what you're saying is improbable or it's not possible. It's, it's, not that it's, 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 it's not that this would represent zero evidence that monkeys have a moral sense of fairness. I suppose that it could. Right. All that I'm saying is that, in my view, the more probable explanation is that the monkey prefers grapes to cucumbers and was angry that it didn't get a cucumber or that it didn't get a grape. You know, 
Wait, yeah. so why would why would you assume that uh, like you said you just said moral sense of fairness, and, I, and I'm I'm assuming that if if I were to put like humans in a similar situation, uh, and one of them uh, was upset, you say, hey, this person is morally offended because they believe this is unfair. What where's the disconnect between the humans behaving this way and the monkey? Why, why couldn't we say that hey, this human is behaving this way because biologically there's some like there's some neuron that flipped in his brain or something. Uh, that, that is leading him to, believe, to to behave this way. So it's not actually morality. It's not actually a sense of fairness. It's just it's just brain juice. Yeah, I think that. Um, so I think that to me the the way that I would answer that question, I'd be interested to hear Fabian's answer. The way that I would answer it is that a human has an ability to have a depth of understanding and a complex understanding of the moral implications of fairness and many different systems of fairness, right? Whereas I don't think that the monkey in this case, at least my, my money would be on, that I don't mm -hmm. think the monkey is at all morally contemplating what is a just fair decision. Rather, they just want the great. How would we find out they don't... that they are? So, I don't, again, I'm not there's a, a similar I don't know, but... There's a similar experiment with humans, right? And so what, what researchers can do is they'll go to two people and they'll say, um, you know, um, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars. Okay. But you have to give the other person, um, some level of money as well. Now, if the other person rejects your offer, none of you get the hundred dollars. Right. And so what this, what ends up happening is that humans often will try and negotiate. How can I get as much money as I want? Right. And how can, but I also want them to accept the offer because if I get a hundred dollars and I say, well, I'm going to take $99 and give you $1. The other person will go, go fuck yourself. And then neither of us get money. And so what humans are capable of is reciprocity, right? They can engage in fairness by understanding we need to work together in, in this system in some capacity so that we both get what we want, right? This is externalizing the idea of fairness towards towards another person, right? So rich people, for example, ri rich, rich, rich people have the capacity to understand what will very likely just take the dollar because they don't care. They have a bunch of money and they're like, yeah, whatever. And poor people are far more likely to reject the offer um, no matter how much money they're given, unless they're given exactly half, right? Like if you offer them $40, poor people will often you would you would think the rich person would be more likely because they don't care, but the rich person is like money's money, I'm good, and the poor person is more concerned about the injustice that is occurring here. But nevertheless, there's a negotiation that goes on about the concept of fairness between them, so that they can, and and, and that shows a moral understanding of Wait, this but is this, wrong and right that I'm doing this. So plenty of animals work together to get food. Like yeah. they, they they work together to not only and to maximize the food they get, but they, yeah, but they'll split them for, uh, evenly amongst each other. I'm sorry to interject, guys, but I have a super chat here uh, that's been that asks. I don't know if this has been answered, but can Econo and Fabian tell us what any organism would have to do to demonstrate that they have moral agency? They literally just need to be able to communicate valid propositional statements about morality. But so if we lack like the ability to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. Wait, okay, so what if what if an alien species showed up, right? And we didn't have the ability to communicate with them, right? But but they were like at our level of intelligence. How would you be able to tell that this alien is like a moral agent has like the the ability to uh, well, not put sober person would just observe their behavior? Well, yeah. Well, Fabian, like, how would you tell this alien is a moral agent? Okay, so an alien that's capable of space travel, I would probably assume that they are a moral agent first, right? Why because are you the that likelihood that they're... Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm answering. Because the likelihood that they're capable of, of production and capacity and mutually working together and, um, and, and, and technolo technology at that level, and they're somehow not capable of reason at a capacity to determine morality that's, that's what I is said near zero. There's... There's a correlation Wait, between intelligence and your ability to contemplate moral thought, but it's not a not a rule. But there is probably certainly a correlation between the two. Wait, hold it's on, just highly like, unlikely if, that if a like, okay. species could travel here and be and not be moral agents. Why? Uh, hold on, we have we have like ants that have create why? like massive hives under the ground that go on for like fucking miles, right? That all work together within this hive to to like toward an end, right? Within like a little society with rules yeah. and structures. If the Zerg so, show up, please, I'm not please, gonna fucking assume please, they're moral agents. Please, please. 
Okay, so so we have animals that are capable of of amazing things, right? Uh, working together to, to construct amazing things. Why would we assume that an animal, uh, similarly capable, and with uh, of of uh, like space travel, constructing things that lead to like space travel? Why would we assume that they're moral agents versus the ants or whatever not being moral agents or beavers even? Because because technology requires production and requires shaping your environment and shaping so your environment so that it, sh shaping your environment towards your own goals and then building upon that knowledge shows a capacity for reason. So do beaver dance. and shows. No, no, no. It, like I said, if the Zerg show up, I'm not assuming they're moral agents. Right, like if a species is not creating technology that requires building upon past learned knowledge and and then shaping their environment towards their goals using that knowledge and making those logical inferences, there's a difference between that and like an alien species that shits out spacefaring creatures and like goes off and eats resources. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that so to I disagree in part with what Fabian's saying. I'm not sure how important. I don't think the ability to communicate is like a necessary part of demonstrating your morality although it, it certainly helps right because to me at least the ability to demonstrate ever, like what could well, be yeah, like the, beyond shadow the ability, of the doubt well, exactly right yeah so the ability to communicate that you have a capacity to ask these questions and contend with these questions obviously the ability to communicate is a prerequisite for that that's a pretty good way to prove that you have the ability to do that right um if you don't have the ability to communicate at all um of course it would at that point it would become a, a i'm not even sure what that would look like like you just literally cannot communicate at all with another intelligent creature because even if they don't have language you can still you know there's there should still be a way to to point send a message right yeah there, there's gotta be some way with like, like, with like squid <laughs> Like uh, no, a, squid, a squid cannot communicate with us right so that's but squid you know, are pretty intelligent though right octopus i, I, I think we're no, no, it's, again, when we say a squid right. is intelligent, right? There's Imagine, there's just imagine in your head, a squid has the capacity for the technology to build spaceships, right? That can travel here. Squid they have build, the capacity basically, to build armor. Listen, like, listen, listen. listen that they is where squids came from. If they can build hmm. a spaceship, right? Then that means that they have usage of appendages, right? That can be used as a form of communication. Like a squid that's that intelligent could float in, like maybe they're fucking levitating. I don't fucking know, right? And they, they fucking crawl on over to you and they move their appendage and they point at a thing and like they try and like, th th there's so many ways with body language that you could, you could begin to reasonably communicate with them in some fashion fairly quickly. Look, can we wait, all wait, agree wait, at least second, that squid please. are super cute? No. Squid are cute, but not as cute as octopus. Oh, they're, they're, they're so animals. cute. Animals do giants, communicate right. with humans in exactly that way, wow. right? right there, there, there are just, plenty of examples okay. of, of even wild animals communicating with humans in just that <laughs> way, pointing, <laughs> pointing, pointing, out, pointing out the thing that they want Again, or okay. pointing out the thing that they're afraid of, whatever the fuck. Octopus are, presuming... are, are actually more intelligent and, and, and cuter than squids, by the way. Sorry, I just had to interject. They're very okay. cute as oh. well. That's yeah. true. Yeah, it's, it's, not that, it's not that you... Okay, how do I put this? You can be intelligent and not be a moral agent, uh, theoretically, in my view. Um, you can also have the ability to communicate somewhat and not be a moral agent. You just asked, you know, how would how would it, how would a being be able to prove that they're a moral agent? Um, to which, obviously, your ability to communicate that fact would be an example. As far as, far as I'm aware, right, a, a bear, a dog, a squid, you know, a fish, um, it, it, at least presently, does not have the ability, do not have the ability to communicate the fact that. They're a moral agent, right? Um, that's I think that's all, right? It's, they have the ability to communicate some sense of like morality, right? Or what they, by what I'd call a sense of morality, but you would just call yeah. it like it's like a biological urge, and somehow that's different from like that's not morality. Emotions right? are not morality. No, I, I don't think having emotions means that you you necessarily have the ability to to contemplate, you know, what is right and wrong and, and good and bad. I, that's that doesn't okay. Seem to then follow I have a question. I have a question. So. So if emotion, if emotions, I guess, um, uh, don't necessarily mean you can tell what's right and wrong. What, what is what would like guilt the guilty emotion be then? What would that? What would feeling guilt? Uh, it, where would that come from if it were not for a sense of like what you're, what is right and what's wrong? There are lots of guilty dogs on TikTok. Well, yeah, like a, I think a dog. I think dogs are li literally like evolutionarily developed throughout time to serve 
human beings, at least to some extent, many dog breeds today, right? And so for, for a dog, right, their feeling, their instinct is like, I want to serve this human. I know what this human wants me to do, like not go to the bathroom in the house, right? But I've done that. I've gone to the bathroom in the house and I'm, you know, now I've disappointed my human and that's- and I've done you know, a bad that thing. Makes me sad, right? No, it makes me sad, right? It doesn't necessarily, it, the dog isn't saying like, oh yes, I've, I've committed a moral wrong by peeing in this house, right? It's, it's, I've done something that's upset um, a, a, a friend of mine, you know, that doesn't mean necessarily they're contemplating the moral choice of peeing in the house. I mean, Wait, teenagers I want, don't want to say morality of what they do. I teenagers want don't treats, and I want morality of what they do, though. How do you, okay, how do you explain that? Get treat, too many people have to we, we, we've got to move on from this because now Ginger's just just said something that I feel like we've answered already is that there are obviously a lot of people that do not actively and deeply engage with morality. A lot of people just say, I'm, I'm Christian. I just listen to the Bible, right? That's not a deep engagement with morality. They're just reading a book, right? Um, you know, a lot of people uh, don't grow up with, with any hard sense of where the morality comes from. They just kind of feel things and they kind of do the things that they want to do, right? But again, just because they don't do those things doesn't mean they completely lack the capacity to do those things. If a person does completely lack the capacity to determine what is right and wrong, they are often put in permanent care or they're put under the care of a human that does have the ability to do that because we don't treat them as similar moral agents to basically people that do have that capacity. Uh, somebody in go. chat gave a super chat, said, for people wondering about human versus animal communication slash language, please research Hawkett's design features. Animals cannot learn language like human. Um, okay. Uh, do you guys think that moths are the same as butterflies? Um, oh, no. no, that way they're not the same, right? That are they the same? Are they basically the same? Are, are moths butterflies? That's apparently like a hot topic of debate among zoology people or whatever. <laughs> I mean, they're obviously different because there's I mean, one I think... is a moth and one is a butterfly. Are right? they? Are they? I, mean, I think there are multiple. I think there are multiple categories by which we use property clusters to determine what a species is and isn't. And like, I'm not a fucking uh, etymologist, right? Like, so I don't fucking know what would be the appropriate answer there. I think it's a silly for someone to yeah. weigh in on that. That isn't. I mean, like, like a St. Bernard and an English Mastiff are both dogs, but an English Mastiff is not a St. Bernard, right? That's how I think of it. Unless, unless butterfly is like a higher genus and like butterfly is a broader category. Like, I don't know. I think it is. I think, I think but even that, but even that is to a certain extent somewhat arbitrary. Well, yeah, it's like how you classify spiders. Like, are daddy long legged spiders? Like, I don't know. I'm going to go Wait. to bed. It's late. Oh, okay. Have a good <laughs> one. Thanks for having me. Good have a good night, guys. Good night. Good night. I, I, need, oh, I need to clear something up really quickly. Um, I just want to be sure about where uh, we stand. Um, so, Econobo, you would be okay with me purchasing an animal and fucking it, right? I, based off no. of what they said, that's already, what I heard. Wait, why not? No, because, again, I don't think that it's incompatible. This is the idea of, like, should I just be able to kill everyone who's, like, mentally retarded, right? Like, no, I don't I don't think so, right? Just because Do someone I? is, like... Wait, no, yeah, hold on. You're, you're going to, like, don't extreme. have morality. So, so, they, they're not I, beneath your so, moral consideration. Okay. Hold on. So, so my, 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 wait, wait, I need to be super clear, because you're, you're talking about, like, killing things. Like, I, my, my, I understand... Okay. Right? Feeling I feel like my like dick I is huge and, and can, like, murder a thing, right? And it, maybe it could, right? But I could just put peanut butter on my dick and let my dog lick it off, right? I could get a large right. dog and I could fuck it in the ass or something and the dog would be fine. Or I could get like a, a cow and fuck it and probably won't even feel it, right? So why shouldn't I be able to do those things? And I'm not going to kill this animal. It'll probably feel good even. Okay, why shouldn't so I be able to do this? Because we are... Oh, did uh, Fabian? He, he's abandoned me. I'm I'm alone now. Um, but he's no, no, oh, he's um, coming back. Don't yeah. worry. Um, um, I think no, I might so, actually, so actually drop off, guys. Sorry oh, okay. to interrupt. Well, thanks for just, joining. Just a little. I wish I had better energy today. I've just been a little drained. Sorry about that. No. But, uh, so you the wrong button. have a good night, okay? You too. Good night. All right. You shout too. out to the Stargazers as well. Have a good weekend. Shout Bye. out. Good night, Zonia. Uh, now, to answer your question, to be because we are humans and we have a higher conception of, of, of morality and what it is, and we can contemplate that. I, I think that to the answer of like, why can't you fuck an animal? I mean, I think to me, the answer is that an animal cannot uh, consent to so, having sex with you. Are right? you a vegan? Um, no, I'm not a vegan. No. Then why, why do you care about them consenting? 
What do you mean? Why do I care? Well, you animals you, don't animals consent. are murdered. Animals are murdered for your for your pleasure every fucking day, right? Like animals, why, why, yeah, why, why, animals, I mean, uh, animals animal don't consent different? to. Animals are yeah. already. Oh, by the way, animals are already raped. Like actually, in um in these uh, agricultural yeah. facilities, right? Mil uh, milk milk oh is is taken Dairy from cows. cows. Um, cows are raped. Um, all sorts of animals are raped. So why do right. we care about consent when it when it's like can, in, in any yeah, other situation? Right, I can answer I the mean, question. Raping, so, you mean like the milking, the harvesting of milk? No, they're like yeah. strapped so, into like the, a metal frame, and another cow is put on top of them, and they're, they're raped. Yeah. Right. So okay. my my answer to that would be that when it comes to like factory farming practices, um, there's nothing necessarily incompatible, in my view, at least. I'm, I'm sure many vegans would get incredibly triggered by me saying this by saying that um, you can have animal welfare and right standards, but also think that it's probably okay to eat meat. Right. And the reason I say that is because. I don't like to see animals suffering, right? That makes me feel bad, right? Cows have emotions. Cows feel pain and sadness, and I don't want them to feel those things, right? And there's a way, there are ways certainly that you can farm animals that don't uh, include. Okay, so going back to my examples, suffering. right? So now to answer the, your the question, peanut butter on my dick of right, getting a cow and fucking it. Maybe, maybe I'll yeah. even, I'll even help the cow. I'll rub one out for the cow. Okay, I'll, I'll give her one. I, I get it. I get like, it. Right? Okay, why okay. shouldn't I be able to do those things? Yeah, okay, and just, just, to, just, just to steal man, just, just to steal, just to steal man Doobie's <laughs> point, just to steal man Doobie's point. I will. Okay, let's I talk would, about fucking animals I, for another two minutes yes. before I can answer the I question. I would. Yeah, uh, well, I just want to. I want to steal man Doobie here. <laughs> I would stick. argue that the cow getting raped in the in the facility is having a worse time than the dog oh, licking sure. peanut butter off of Doobie's dick because at least sure. it likes peanut butter. So I actually have. Yeah, factory farms are pretty practice. disgusting. I heard it's pretty simple. It's it's pretty simple. They are not moral agents, okay? So why can't you do whatever it is? Why is it morally wrong to do things to them, right? Like disgusting, horrible things. Why is it wrong to rape it? Why is it even rape? The answer is, is that it is the psychopath. We recognize that it is the psychopath or some mentally deficient or fucked up or immoral person that gains personal pleasure by doing this to another animal. And that that, that behavior is trans... That behavior is transferable to other people. We can simply look at serial killers, right? Many serial killers get their start by torturing young anim by small animals and things of that nature. We understand that because they have mirror neurons and because they can show emotions, that our actions towards them is transferable towards our actions towards other humans. Okay, that but is why you're talking about torture animal now. cruelty... Right, but that is why animal cruelty or rape against something that can't consent, right, which is what you're describing with the peanut butter. Situation. Well, you selectively care about consent, right? You're talking about torture, like so. There, there's a, a, a village. I'm, I'm, it's, it's pretty. I'll give an example. I'll give an example. Right I'll give an example. So the, it's pretty common in uh, Colombia, right, for young men and boys to go around and fuck donkeys, and these donkeys, you know, because they're uh, used to donkey tick, they don't feel anything. It doesn't hurt them, right? So. Uh, why is it, so they're not like like harming this thing? They're not torturing this animal. Because they they in fact they for a lot of these people this is their prized animal. They treat it very well. So th because this isn't like something a psychopath without, is doing. This is something that hey, this is getting, I'm getting pleasure. I'm treating this animal. Humans. That's stupid. No, that's silly. What? Okay, I think it's it's not, this is akin it's to saying that hey, hard. if if I if I if I uh, if I slaughter a cow. It's, and, and and make hamburgers out of it. I, that's hey, that's transferable onto humans. And I might slaughter a human and make it make well, them, no, them a hamburger. A, no, because 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 it is being done for form and function and production of it's meat. Done for pleasure. It's done for no. It's done being the done pleasure for of eating utility. a steak. Not what do you not, mean? Okay, no, okay, okay. No, wait a minute. No, How are you going to justify the consequences? How are you going you're, to justify? No, listen, let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. Let me finish. The only person on screen you're looking, during the animal fucking conversation. You are. This is you up. are. You, listen. <laughs> let me finish. Okay, you're talking about the consequences of the action is is the the production of the meat, not the enjoyment of the steak. Now you're talking about second and third order consequences. When you're talking about fucking an animal that can't consent, that is transferable. When you're talking about killing an animal that is not a moral agent in the most humane way possible to ease its suffering for the for the desire of production, that is that the the like it doesn't have the capacity to consent and it's not a moral agent in that situation these are different scenarios 
This isn't second. I don't and third think they're order different concept. at all. I think I think he I think your explanation doesn't even make any sense, right? Because I what what so I'm enjoying boring. when I'm fucking a donkey, what I'm enjoying when I'm fucking a donkey, right? Isn't the fact that I'm fucking a donkey. It's the orgasm I'm getting or the the feeling around my dick, right? So it's well, it's not that it's yeah. not it's not that I'm, I'm getting pleasure that, from forcing no, myself on this on this, this, getting, this innocent animal. You're no, you're lying. You're getting pleasure from the sexual experience that you are engaging with in an unwilling creature versus you're not engaged in pleasure seeking activity that is transformed. Wait, hold on. So, so, wait, okay, okay. When you're, <laughs> when you're, no, 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 no. Let me finish my fucking argument. Make any sense. It, no, it's no, it argument. does make sense. Oh, I'm pulling apart the bullshit and you're not pulling apart anything. In your fucking argument. You're not pulling apart and anything. You is because once I'm whooping oh your fucking ass, you're not know, whooping your ass right? because yeah, I'm, I'm proving you wrong. No, because Listen. you've already contradicted yourself. No. I've not contradicted myself. Yes, you're yes, trying you to have. interrupt because you're losing oh, like okay. a punk ass. Go, bitch. go ahead, go ahead Listen. and finish the stupid argument, and then we'll go to my. Yes, thing. let me finish the fucking argument. There is a substantive difference between pleasure seeking that you are engaging in in the act of sex with an animal that cannot consent, and the production process of second and third order consequences towards what it is that you seek in goal uh, in in actions designed towards your goals. These are fundamentally different. You cannot compare the two and say that they are exactly the same situation. How can you justify, how can we be okay with, with all these uh, animals getting raped every day in these farms, but when it's a pe when it's, wait, okay wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, <laughs> we're okay with it. We, we tolerate it. To some extent, we're okay with it because we accept it and we tolerate it going on every day. But Doobie's dog likes peanut butter and Doobie likes getting his dick licked. They're they're both having getting some pleasure out of this. So like you know, how can you be I, I was, I, okay real simple, with real simple. I'll answer real simple. No, real simple. Okay, so if I find someone right, and I and I rape one hundred women, right, mm -hmm. but one of those women actually has a fantasy about being raped and enjoys being raped, did I commit? It's not even rape. Rape. That's, not, that's not a good analogy rapes. because that's not a good analogy because Doobie knows that his dog. Really Doobie is. has a guarantee that his dog loves peanut butter. No, he doesn't right? because the, the fuck not licking his fucking. He doesn't <laughs> so have a guarantee I, I, that the dog I, I, has the yeah. capacity to consent to these sexual situations. The dog likes peanut butter. That's all that matters. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. If the question is. Like yeah. the dog may like peanut butter, but it doesn't like licking his to do his dick. I like even money. talking about fucking dogs. I like dogs money. For like I like money. Ten it minutes. Doesn't necessarily. What Hold on. Oh, shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. Fucking economists every time. Right. I like money. I like money. I don't necessarily like going to work. So does that mean that I do not have the capacity to consent to going to work? I only I have you have, you have have reason. To like We're not. Money. You're not in you're not a fucking dog. You have reason. I'm ginger. I'm basically the same thing. <laughs> Stop and for the lack of It's not the same thing for the lack of human rights based upon your capacity for reason and your bodily autonomy. Okay. So okay, again, but... maybe, maybe I missed the answer and I feel like you just repeated the thing, but to be super clear. So if I present my penis with peanut butter on it to uh, my dog, to my dog, right? And the dog yeah. willingly comes over, nuzzles in, licks away. I'm pat patting the dog on the head, having a great time, right? And then I finish. The dog licks up the cum, and we cuddle for a bit, and, and it's all good. Right? How is this like me? Uh, how so? First off, how did the dog not consent to this interaction? It walked over. It did the thing. We had a great time. Doesn't have the capacity for consent. Okay. <laughs> so this, it seems like it walking over and just going at it. That seems okay. like consent to me. I don't know. So but I, even okay, I but answered, if, if I were to grant you that, is, that it doesn't have the capacity I, to consent, why does it matter? No, 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 no. I I'm, 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 I'm getting pleasure. The dog's getting you pleasure. We're, we're, we're developing a closer you bond to each other. What's the issue? Prove to you, I can prove to you very simply why you're full of shit. Do the same analogy, but with a two-year-old. Does it make any sense? Tell me if it's funny. So well, that doesn't make any fucking analogy but with a two year old. Okay, okay, wait a minute. The dog I don't, I don't compare the, the two. Wait a minute. The dog the dog is just using Doobie's dick as a method to get the peanut butter in its mouth. <laughs> Look, okay, I think that Fabian's point on the two year old is, is, is pretty reasonable because it just it seems like we have a, a standard for consent. All that I would say is that 
I, I'm I'm a real utilitarian. I don't think Fabian is. I think he'd probably lean more towards deontology than I would. But from from my point of view, it's just that I'm the a virtue general rule... ethicist, except for things that the uh, nerd fucking term. Well, Shut sure, the sure, fuck sure. up. Get to the right. point. But what what a real utilitarian would say is just that the, generally the rule that you know tends to work out best in terms of human suffering and happiness and stuff like that is probably the best rule, right? Um, and in general, I think what Fabian's getting at a little bit inadvertently because he's not a utilitarian is that it's it's probably not a good rule that you're able to fuck animals, even if they enjoy it, right? Because that probably has a lot of Why? negative downstream effects. It's similar to like and this is the example I was going to give. What is the Hold on, Stardust. Here? Stardust, hold on. It's like the same reason, right? Why it's, I think most people uh, would consider it immoral to fuck a dead body, right? Now, if you're in the middle of the woods and you see a dead body um, and you have sex with it, right? And, and nobody's around to see it, you know, you know, is that, have you committed a moral wrong, right? I would say you, belong you have, you have committed a moral wrong because as a general rule of society, it's probably, it wouldn't probably fucking work out if we just allowed people to go fucking mm -hmm. dead bodies and shit all the time, right? And well, wait, wait, why is it wrong? Why is it wrong that, to fuck a dead body? Why is it wrong? I just, I just said why. Globe Twitter? What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Look, okay. We've, we've, we've talked about animal <laughs> pronouns to show up. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> like, oh, look, why is okay. it wrong to fuck a dead body, though? For real? There's, it's not like the body can consent. Book. It's not like the body like, is screaming rape, you know? The, the owner same, of the, the body same reason left. that it's wrong to fuck a, a dog. No, the owner it's of the body the... left the body. The body is abandoned. It doesn't belong to anybody anymore. Okay, you can right, fuck there, it. But my there, logic there could... applies to both. Okay, because right, my logic right. is that it's... the behavior is transferable in the, in, right. in, and it shows a capacity for psychopathy yeah. and all kinds of other things. The downstream of other Squatters humans. rights. Right. Sorry. So it's like it's it's like what I it's it's a similar <laughs> answer that I gave on. Uh, I was debating uh, Zin Shapiro. Actually, I remember. And he was he of course, because it's a debate with Zin Shapiro. He brings up incest. You know, that's just what he does. And. Um, he, he was talking about incest and I, and I gave a similar answer. I was like, the reason you wouldn't allow, he was like, what about two twin brothers where there's no power dynamic? Why is them fucking wrong? It's like, because generally the rule of not incest is probably a good rule. Right. And if we allowed some forms of incest, no, it stupid. probably spills over. It's not stupid. It's the way that we govern yeah, you ourselves. You can't just claim that hey, this, rule, this rule is probably a good rule. And that's why it's it's good to have this rule. I let's, need let's, more. I, 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 well, really quick, I'm just more... claiming that because it's a simpler explanation. Obviously, the more in depth, it's, it's a bad is, argument. It's not though. I just You're gave a simple explanation, bad. right? I need Again, more the, the, of an argument more... behind the dead body thing because dead bodies. Look, <laughs> it's not like there's somebody because, there to say, "Oh no, don't do that." Because to me. okay, because like what Fabian said, okay, is that having sex with a dead body, I think, is predominantly i mean i cannot imagine there's an exception to this you you saw the fucking uh that interrogation i sent you yeah, Stardust. It was horrifying That's it terrible. seems it's it seems like when people have a desire to have sex with dead bodies that is that is a a, a marker for some significant and negative and, and very anti-social behavior that has poor downstream effects and society it seems like has been governed pretty well under the rule of you can't have sex with dead bodies because that's well, going to lead to some bad Well, it might not have a downstream. It might not have a downstream effect. The part of the reason why this guy uh, had this, there's this downstream effect, is because uh, with, with a lot of these people who like dead bodies, um, what they what they'll they'll kill somebody and then they'll fuck the dead body. But if they just had dead body brothels, then they wouldn't even have that problem. Wait, hold on. But I think that mm. the, the the problem with that is. Um, it might be true that somebody who's willing to break a taboo like that, like fucking a dead body, uh, in a society that has taught them from birth that, hey, you shouldn't fuck dead bodies, this is a bad thing to do, you should respect the dead, etc. This person, right, the, you might, it might be reasonable to say, hey, there, this, is, this is a massive red flag, this person's willing to do this, everybody knows you shouldn't do this thing because we've taught everybody not to do this thing. Uh, but if you had a society where this was not a taboo, where it was common, right, like in Colombia, where fucking donkeys is common. Right? In, yeah. other, in, in other nations where fucking other animals is common. If you had a nation like that, it wouldn't be an indication of any kind of psychopathy or a serial yeah. killer mentality or anything like this. Well, right? just, so, just so you're, starting, clear, you're starting just, from just, like five points down the road. I'm asking you to go back to the start and ask me yeah, to, and I'm asking you to justify making... Well, go for it. 
Well, I think the flaw is that I, I to my Colombian brethren out there, I, I don't think it's common that Colombians just fuck donkeys all the time, to be clear. But when it comes to, for instance, I think incest is a good example, right? There are societies with more and less incest that's more and less permissible. And in societies that have you know, more permissible rules and sort of social stigmas uh, surrounding incest, they see a lot of very real problems in their society with power dynamics and with aggregate health problems and diseases and stuff like that that are negative for the people involved. So that's how I Sounds like an argument against well, homosexuality. Really quick, well, really quick, Dimi, that's how I would argue Lakers. that the rule of no incest is probably a good rule at an individual level. Right? And so similarly with having sex with animals though. or dead bodies. Well, so dead so bodies no are different from sex. animals like, and living it's beings. Any it's not, though. I think that generally what we've proven, right, is that we can have a society that engages in anal sex and can manage that responsibly, right? I mean, we yeah. should attempt yeah, and to You can have a society can. That, that engages in, you know, uh, some form of zoophilia and engage that res responsibly like some societies have right. in you. It, so it appears you can't because there's no societies it's a, that it, it's to one large degree engage in zoophilia. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm an East Coast boy, so I'm ready to get the fuck out of here. I had a great time. Um, it looks like what we have learned tonight is that um, Counterpoints is going to be a vegan any day now, and that in Doobie's perfect world, um, the government will get rid of your guns and kill all drug dealers, but they won't stop you from fucking your dog. And, you know, I appreciate all the good times that we had. <laughs> well, See I think around. this is a very right. interesting Thanks, panel. Thanks, Thanks right. for joining us, Fabian. All right, Scott. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Ah, one. Fuck me. Sorry. Giant chaos monster. I actually have a question. Wait. Uh, yeah, no. Very quickly. Kind of puts. What do you pay? You can't ask questions unless you can tell me why it's wrong for me to fuck my dog. Or Wait, a no, dead I body. Have a question, though. Or, or a dead body. I really want to see you. If the dead body belongs to me, it's, if it's a relative and I'm the next, the next of kin, right? It comes to me. It's like, my property now. It's my responsibility. It's your property now. Exactly. Why is it wrong for me to fuck this up? The person hey, whose property you, 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 it was, it doesn't exist anymore. Well, to, to be clear, and you, it's you can't property, own a dead body. That's another, that's, that's another one of those rules oh, yes, that you can. seems to work out. You, talking you about, got like, squatters you rights. You got squatters rights. Wait, hold on. Why, why do you think you can't own a dead body? And why would that be, why would that even be a good rule? You can't. The only way, the only way that I'm aware of to take possession of a dead body is with the prior consent of the person. Sure. Right? What if so they give you consent? Instance... Yeah. What? No. 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 Yeah, what if they yeah. give you consent to fuck the body? They they uh, bequeath the body to you after they die, and you decide to fuck it. Yeah, this is a good question. Hold on. I'm gonna Google this real quick. I, I also and have another thing to to propose. Me. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's say there's a there's a house that used to belong to a lady, right? Fuck you. And the right. lady. Well, wow. Um, okay. Anyways, the lady moves out of the house, but she never sells it. But she leaves it. The house is is it, you know she's she's left the house alone. Okay. You go and you find this house and you start living in this house, right? If that lady comes back after a certain amount of time and is like, hey, what, what are you doing in my house? You can be like, I have squat squatter's rights. So why can't you do the same thing with a body? We know. Wait, what country are you <laughs> in? It's not fucking yours. Like, <laughs> what the fuck I are actually, we doing? Wait, what? So, just, so while you were saying that, I actually... Um... I learned something interesting. You can actually buy human skulls, like real human skulls online. So I'm kind of tempted to try out some of these hypotheticals, IRL. I want to um, check what fucking Doobie's been using his fucking dark web fucking... Yeah. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm going to sure throw back to one. you that no, you don't. <laughs> you're, you're, I think your life is happier if you never check that. <laughs> I'm a very I think our next person, panel okay. should be specifically. I think I think our next panel should be specifically about this topic. Should there be Romeo and Juliet laws, but for necrophilia? If someone's on their deathbed, oh they're close enough, right? <laughs> this is one of my mods typed that. That's so funny. Um. Okay. Yeah. How about how about it? Next next panel we have, we'll talk about that. Whether there should be Romeo and Juliet laws for necrophilia. Thirty five hundred dollars for the human skulls. So then, that means expensive. it would be totally okay if it's like over, like sixteen or eighteen. Do you think or... you get to like? Do you, can you sell your like skull ahead of time? 
I don't think so. I know there's a guy who um he's made like a business of buying and selling like body parts, but these are things that have already um been like on the market uh, basically. That's the Democratic Party doobie. Okay. They sell baby parts. We all know that. That is true. Um, sorry, I, I, I hope that I didn't scar you guys too much, but I think we, I think that should be at least one of the topics for the next panel, because that would be interesting. We could really dive into that one. Only if you guys want, though. Can we, yeah, so I guess, I guess, is there something that doesn't involve, like, animal fucking or dead corpse fucking or anything <laughs> like that that we can hit yeah. on? Like, and it's we not, I don't care, I'm just, sh yeah. I'm just no, shooting been... people in the face, so it's not that big of a deal. But I do think it, I'm happy that there's three other people's faces right now. Now that we've been talking about animal fucking and you know, body <laughs> fucking for fucking. I think I've been pretty She's clear that I don't kind of stuff human, in the so, past. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, let's no. talk about something else. Uh, um, what was the argument behind defunding the police? Like, why did people want to do that? Because they uh, wanted to fuck. Okay, be I'll tell you the real reason. It's because progressives fucking hate cops, and cops are probably overfunded in some degrees, mostly because of administrators. And as a result, they just wanted to cut into that budget so they could fucking feed their hippy dippy bullshit programs, which might, might have better social outcomes in the fucking long term. But the truth is, they shit the fucking bed by basically their yeah. optics and rhetoric. Okay. Yeah, I'd say is it definitely an optics failure, one hundred percent. Yeah, I don't. I don't Although see how I did it's done. love that entire two years where we all pretended that it was okay, I loved that one. I I fucking it was great. That pissed that pissed me off so much, dude. I I was okay with it on some level because once you get to the steel man, it's like okay, could we use field social workers so cops shoot less schizophrenics? Like yeah, absolutely. So let's do that. But then it just get it gets frustrating when nobody wants to concede anything about anything ever. Yeah, I mean, with the, somebody who's, like, violent and having, like, a mental break, like, probably you do want cops there, you know, <laughs> so. Well, it, it, the, okay, but there is such a thing, there, there's definitely such a thing as cops being too aggressive and basically instigating situations purposefully because they would like to get into a fight. I yeah. think anybody who's been in a major city has had dickhead cops who started a fight that didn't need to be a fight, and it's because they were bored and they didn't like the mm -hmm. person they were talking to. Certainly, yeah, certainly. Like, yeah, Trayvon, like, what, like the whole Trayvon situation, do you think that, like, he was looking for, like, someone, like, just like a like a black kid? I, I, I think fucking George Zimmerman had fucking, you know, vigilante hero fucking syndrome where he wanted to be a cop or a Marine or something, but he didn't want to actually put in the work in order to go do it. So instead, it was better for him to just walk around his neighborhood with a concealed <clears throat> weapons permit and harass people who didn't look like they belong there. Which, by the way, that's like fucking 20 minutes away from my house. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I think I think Zimmerman was actually mostly justified. Really? Well, the reason I know I know so, I would disagree. <laughs> I disagree. Well, yeah. okay. So for the because he wasn't. We, so, there's no proof that he was in, in the act of actually committing a crime. There was no proof. Doesn't matter. That. He was it, he was it walking does. around the na he was walking around the fucking neighborhood. He did live there. He was a black guy in a mostly white, nice gated community, or not gated, but like fenced in. Um, so no, it it didn't have anything to do with that. Like a normal cop, if he would have stopped fucking that kid, he would have checked his ID, seen that it was his parents' house, taken him to his house, and that's all that would have happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he well, didn't. He didn't stop yeah. him, right? Like he was just following him to make sure he didn't lose him, and he he did the right thing, calling the cop. Allegedly, uh, so... okay. So allegedly, uh, fucking uh, Trayvon, uh, basically <clears throat> doubled back and confronted him, and that started the fight. Yeah. And then George fucking lost the fight, and when he started losing the fight, that's when he pulled the pistol and shot him. Well, there's right. there's there's like a law or there's rules about this in in most states where it's like the idea that if you put yourself in a position to use deadly force, even you're if it is self-defense, you're potentially culpable, right? And th this was, I think, the main... This was, like, the most reasonable thing that people said about Kyle Rittenhouse, was that mm. if he's guilty of anything, it is that. And with similarly with the Trayvon Martin case, it's like, look... That's making I, sense. To be, it actually makes complete sense if you ask me, right? Wait, um, but, if, but if you're just following him, like, is, is following a guy, like, putting yourself in, it's, in a life-and-death situation... It's, it it is because the nine one one operator told him not to do that, that it was unsafe. And I think it's very reasonable. If I was a teenager on the street 
and I saw a grown man who wouldn't stop fucking following me, I would very reasonably, I would feel threatened, yes. And I don't know if it would be unreasonable to uh, react cool. to that with violence. Wait, but then why wouldn't that law also apply to Trayvon? He put himself in a dangerous situation. Uh, by what do you mean? Back and fighting no, the guy instead they of going have, home. Yeah. Like one's a civilian, the other one's not. They're both civilians. They're both no, civilians. because. Because one oh, could oh, feel... Wait, 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 was Zimmerman... Hold on. Zimmerman was Z not a cop. He was just like no, a he, neighborhood... He's, yeah, he's a citizen. Yeah. Um, oh but the Lord. point is, is that... Um, no, so ex excessive self-defense exists. I'm not sure if it would apply to Trayvon. I'm really not sure. I mean, obviously he's dead, so there's no ability to ask that question. But um, it, it, the question of, like, did Zimmerman do something wrong? Uh, the answer is yes. I mean, he, ra he harassed a teenager and put himself... He had moral uh, agency. Wait, hold on. Yeah, How, exactly. Hold on. So if the story is true... He didn't harass him, right? He called the cops, and then he and then he followed him because he didn't want to lose him in the houses or whatever. Right? So if he, he did. didn't like, yeah. Wait, hold on. So if he didn't like, uh, you know, uh, accost him, he didn't try to stop him, anything like this. He, like, what was wrong? Like, Following in, someone aside, aside from no... aside from disobeying the the the, the operator, right? which which, which by the way did. isn't a crime. It was yeah. just like, like it's so, it's advice. It's a civilian advising so, another civilian. Yeah. Following, so aside, following aside from, someone, from that potentially, right? So what's the issue yeah. with following somebody that might make it okay for that person to attack you? Following someone is a, for no good reason, is a threatening behavior, right? And well, there was a good is, reason. There is no good reason yeah. to follow Trayvon Martin. It was, from well, Zimmer, no, from there Zimmerman's was, there perspective, was good, there, was. there was. There was a good wasn't. reason. It was just wrong. I, so, well, but if it's so, if it's wrong, it's not a good reason, right? I'm not, I'm not talking about it? morally. I'm saying that the the facts that he put together to believe that he was doing the mm -hmm. right thing were incorrect. So, so for instance, like if you see somebody kind of skulking around in a hoodie at midnight, you know, in your neighborhood, and it's a and it's like a normal fucking neighborhood where people aren't getting fucking wasted and drunk all the fucking time, it's actually perfectly okay for you to be a little bit suspicious, call the police, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's not. But I disagree with that. Yes, it is. If you see what? somebody walking around in a fucking hoodie in your bougie ass fucking gated community at fucking midnight, you can't call the cops. So, no, I don't think so. Well, it's not that you can't. Obviously, you can. I, I don't think you should. Right now, when it comes Why? to your example, because, are you in the because, city like, or something? I'm in the suburbs. Like, are you in a different style of place to live? It? No, no, no. I've lived in. Like, was... I've lived in every kind of neighborhood you can imagine. Right, but the point is just to say that. Um, no, like, I don't, I don't think seeing, like, ah, yes, oh, we this also is live a person. in Florida. Hoodies are a staple of American fashion. Like, like I have no idea why. All, all I'm can saying. I, can I clear something right. up really quickly? Just real, just, well, just really quick. Yeah, sure. What's so, so, Connor, maybe you remember this, but I remember, um, that it wasn't just that he was walking down the sidewalk. Zimmerman claimed that he was, like, going between the houses in, in the community. He was, but that, that's because it was a shortcut to his dad's house. Yeah. So, so, so to be super clear, like, from Zimmerman's perspective, somebody yeah. in a hoodie going in this, like, fancy area, going between the houses, it's, he, he got suspicious, called the cops, and then because he didn't want to lose the guy, he followed him, and then his story is that Trayvon turned back and attacked him. Well, and then also not only that, but like this, this is a like relatively common thing for people to fucking burglarize cars in the middle of the night. They'll fucking they'll just walk around until they find a fucking unlocked door and they'll fucking jump into your shit. And that dude, that happens. I, I don't live. The city is called Sanford. It's about 20 minutes north, um, but I don't live in Sanford. But anywhere that's not the bougiest of the bougie, this is super fucking common, like crazy common. What break? You're saying breaking in the cars at night or something? Vehicles, yeah, lit literally just walking around trying door handles yeah. in the middle of the night, seeing whose shit is fucking unlocked, and then stealing all their shit. Super common. Yeah. So I'm not. I'm not saying that there's no circumstance where like you could say to yourself like this person is acting suspiciously, and so I'm gonna call the police on them. All that I'm saying is like walking around a neighborhood in a hoodie is just not the set of circumstances that to me I'd be like, oh yeah, I'll call the police on that person. <laughs> you know? Maybe. I, I, but I think do be well, adding was, in like walking was. between houses. If you're fucking super sus, if you're kind of, um, if you're not, I'm not saying uh, Trayvon is sus. I'm saying fucking, if you're a vigilant person, there are some alarm bells that got tripped off with that. Yeah. I can see that, but I think that that, so you say vigilant, but I would say like paranoid, right? Again, if if you're, if you're saying is it like paranoid, if the bad what, things happen, I would imagine well, it's pretty because, common because that when someone is trying to like, Trayvon wasn't actually doing anything, crime, right, they would so. want to conceal their face. 
No, no, no. But, but okay. But the, so, so this is something that happens with police officers all the time. Um, things that are, that are nefarious and things that are benign can look the same. And it's actually up to you, like as a law enforcement officer to investigate by walking up to people, asking them, following them sometimes. It's up to you uh, to fucking see whether or not they are benign or nefarious. Now, fucking what's his face dickhead he didn't necessarily have like the authority to do that but what doobie's kind of poking at is do we really want to be engaged in a society in which if something suspicious is happening you literally can't or shouldn't based off of instinct do something about it yeah and and, and to be clear like this wasn't just like a a a peaceful quiet community there had been break-ins and attempted breaks break-ins in the community Right. Uh, it, it was yeah, it's a relatively nice community, but it's next to a rough area, and yeah. like basically shit had happened before. So that that's where. Right. So I understand yeah. everything you guys are saying, right? Again, it's it's not that there's not a there's not a context where you could call the cops and say I am suspicious this person is acting nefariously, committing a crime or whatever. Like, of course, right? That that those set of circumstances can exist, right? I've lived in the shittiest types of neighborhoods that this country has to offer, right? I mean, I have, right? And I just don't think that there's any context where I see a guy in a, in a, in a, in a hoodie walking between, you know, walking between houses. And I'm like, ah, you know, this calls for me calling the police. I just, I, I can't imagine doing that. And I don't think it would be right if, for me to Even if your neighborhood has had break-ins areas, and but... burglaries and whatnot, and uh, this person somebody you don't recognize in the area, and he's ha- he has his hoodie up at night, like, you're not going to call the cops just to have That's... somebody take a look at it? So as I said, like, I, I think I have, you know, I, I, I've never lived in Detroit, to be clear, right? I'm sure there are worse neighborhoods than the neighborhoods that I, than I have lived in, but no, I have no, lived in, in some in of the most crime-ridden places. worse neighborhoods, it would borderline places. be less suspicious. Right. That's the crazy thing. Like, if you were in a worse neighborhood, somebody walking around in a fucking hoodie at midnight, that happens all the time. Who gives a fuck? So, so that's what I'm kind of saying, where a suburb would actually be borderline more alarming because with the fucking suburb, like that shit doesn't happen all the time. That that's yeah. part of what I we're talking. I disagree. About. I think I think in the suburbs it does have. I mean, I don't know. Like I I think with hoodies the fucking are, hoodie. Yeah, hoodies oh. are really fucking common. Like uh, like they're a staple in a lot of people's like wardrobes, we, okay, especially but, but, late right, at night. But I'm I'm twenty minutes away from the site of the occurrence, and it is roughly like like you know well, uh, even right now. But it's Connor, can I can I ask a star. hypothetical? The first day, it's going to be forty degrees this year. Can I ask a hypothetical, Connor? Sure. Here's an interesting question. Okay, let's say that I live in um. This is a conversation I've had with uh, with uh, uh, not, not close members of my family, but members of my family. Um, let's say that um, you know, let's say that I live in a neighborhood. Um, you know, it's a it's a mostly white Hispanic neighborhood. It's like ninety ninety eight percent Christian and two percent who the fuck knows what they are, right? Um, and let's say that I see a brown guy in a turban walking through my neighborhood. Uh-huh. Never never seen a brown guy in a turban in my neighborhood ever. I've never even met a brown guy in a turban. Let's just say, which is the circumstance uh-huh. for many people. Would it be reasonable? Would it would would it be would it, would it lack judgment if I said there's a brown guy in a turban walking around my neighborhood 911 this normally doesn't happen I'm very suspicious of this person in my neighborhood. Would that be a reasonable thing to do just because it doesn't normally happen? Oh man, I'm going to get crazy. It depends on if you buy you want to like say. I, I was about to say so you know the truth. Let TV. me let me give the real the real real answer. So no, and the reason why is because when you have these negative stereotypes or whatever, what you're what you're looking for is at least in the military it would be target indicators. They're variables that basically are shorthand for things that could be nefarious, right? So when you're looking at a brown guy in a fucking turban or whatever, you're assuming Muslim. By the way, like Muslims disproportionately are going to be immigrants. They're going to be people who have come to this country either fleeing uh, shit or they're going to be like high well-to-do fucking people who have immigrated to be doctors and lawyers and engineers and all that kind of shit. So no, seeing a fucking brown guy in a turban isn't going in the suburbs isn't going to be a target indicator because chances are that motherfucker's a fucking engineer or some shit. And he's not going to be doing a jihad in the fucking, you know, in the suburbs. Yeah, but most most people in hoodies don't, commit what crimes sneak- presumably right okay but again you're like you're trying to like t- separate this from the context that it happened in no no I, I added no no but i added, added that, a, hit, that to, a recent history of break-ins and burglaries and attempted break-ins in the specific neighborhood this is why zimmerman was doing the neighborhood watch thing and at night uh there's a guy with a hoodie up not just walking through the neighborhood on the sidewalk but going between the houses and zimmerman says he's, he's like looking around and he looks like he's on drugs or something 
right? which, which, you know, I think got him suspicious, reasonably. So he called the cops. And then he, the when he's going to lose a guy because he wants to make sure that the cops speak to this person to make sure that he doesn't get away and, and break into somebody's house or something. He follows him, and his story is Zimmerman turned back and attacked him. So the, all the, everything Zimmerman did in that chain right. event seems totally serious. Uh, no, seems I totally don't, I don't. Uh, uh, reasonable. It's two. It's two separate questions, right? So the the question of like calling the cops is kind of what we've been talking about for the last you know ten minutes, right? Is it reasonable to call the cops, right, in this scenario? I don't think it is because I just, in my view, I don't think it raises to like the level of suspicion where but like you're a more passive had... person than he is or well, I, I am. I, I, I don't know. I'm. I'm well, no, well, sure. Obviously, there, we're going to have different answers here. That's why we're talking about it. I'm. Ju I'm just saying that. What I what I would say is that no, it wouldn't be reasonable. It's not what I would teach people to do. It's not what I recommend. Right now, on on the second question of, um, did at, at the point of calling the cops, did Zimmerman were all his actions completely reasonable? Um, certainly, I wouldn't say so. You know, if you feel like you're in a dangerous situation, it doesn't seem reasonable at all to follow the person who you view as suspicious and potentially dangerous, right? And from Trayvon Martin's perspective, um, if I see a grown man following me, again, I'm I'm going to feel threatened by that, and I don't think it would be completely unreasonable to react. Uh, with violence in that scenario, why the fuck are you following okay, but, me? What but, the fuck? This is, but this is part of the narrative <laughs> that I want to put. I want to put um, like in the speculative camp because I, I'm getting hearsay. And by the way, like literally have met fucking Zimmerman at an event. Fucking uh, met some of the cops who were involved in the investigation. All that kind of stuff. How tall is Zimmerman? So, uh, <laughs> five, He's not that tall, is he? Eight five between five eight and five ten. I would say. I'd have told you so, he was short. Napoleon yeah. complex. Wow, just slandering That's what caused people. all of this. So, anyways, <laughs> um, but the no, but the point, the point being that uh, with the situation, okay, allegedly, all right, Trayvon was involved in like uh, basically like amateur boxing, like like he basically him and his friends would scrap, they would fucking videotape it, all that kind of shit, and then also he didn't like he could have gone home, but he doubled back for the confrontation, and like I'm gonna I'm gonna have a kid basically or i do have a kid i have a second kid on the way both of them boys um and i'm gonna tell them like if you're in that kind of situation or whatever that you're not fighting a stranger by yourself in the middle of the fucking night you're getting the fuck out of dodge now is that like morally incumbent on trayvon obviously not but is it good advice and my answer would be yeah yeah of course right again if i had children i would not tell them hey if a man is following you you need to confront that situation with violence again him. yeah i mean yeah. like violence should be a last option just to mitigate risk to yourself because you don't know if that guy i mean in this scenario you don't know if that guy's a fucking gun he's gonna fucking kill you right that's something that i would tell my kid right Especially um, and so so it's not it's not that it's not that trayvon made the best decisions at every point it's just was it unreasonable for him to do the things that he did and it's like i don't feel like it's unreasonable right um for instance i saw a video of um i saw a video of a guy it was uh, the other day um uh and it was uh fuck i think he was like um I think he was like a bank appraiser and the guy's house was getting foreclosed on and the guy whose house was getting foreclosed on was like confronting the appraiser. And basically the appraiser said, you need to get the fuck out of my face. I feel threatened by you. If you take one more step towards me, uh, you know, there's, there's going to be some violence, right? Or something along those lines, right? The guy takes a step towards him. He, the, the appraiser swings at the guy and then he swung first. Keep that in mind. The guy whose house it is, who was stepping towards the guy, then initiates a full-on fight and proceeds to get his ass beat. Now, I think legally, the person who swung first is actually in the clear because it's not unreasonable that he felt threatened by that person coming up to him in that context. And I think in the context of Trayvon Martin's situation, it's very much not unreasonable that he felt threatened. And I don't think it would at all be a legal or, or, or moral issue if he responded with violence. And I suppose he did, right? Well, and that, that's actually one of the things in Florida is we're like a stand your ground state or whatever. And uh, basically what that means is if somebody confronts you with violence, you don't have to back off. Um, so that's that that's kind of one of the things where they've they've literally had gangs uh, confront each other <laughs> and get into shootouts. And the state attorney can't uh, prosecute either one of them uh, because basically both of them are claiming self-defense. <laughs> <laughs> well, but but to be fair though, wow. in my in my situation though, it wasn't even like the guy was technically just walking up to the appraiser, right? Technically, he was just angrily nah, looking know. and it, walking up to him, right? It, there's and, all these things that you. Well, can this must have been like a country western or something. 
no, there's there's all these things that you can articulate, particularly like as a law enforcement officer, but even as like a lay civilian, they they just don't train you on this shit because they. Right, don't there like, are things like uh, the fighting words doctrine, and like you can you can certainly feel intimidated and threatened by someone even if they don't lay hands on. Yeah, just, you, right? and that's just because they haven't point. swung on you yet doesn't mean that you you're not thinking that violence is potentially imminent. You don't have to wait to be right. swung right. on. Right, and that's or, or... that's exactly my point. Yeah, yeah, but this is again. But you can say maybe you you don't believe Zimmerman's story, right? But his story yeah. isn't that he was like chasing Trayvon, and Trayvon like turned and punched him in the face. It was that he was actually going back to his car, um, yeah. and Trayvon uh, he confronted him at the car and punched him in the face. Right. So so he had stopped chasing Trayvon at that point, right? And he was going back to his car when Trayvon came up from like the side of the car and punched him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So there was um, so no like Supreme get out of my face question. or what are you doing. Oh, or Supreme has a comment, at least. He says, um, can I get a legal breakout on that one? I have a super hard time believing initiating violence would be legally protected as a response to a person walking up to you. It yeah, depends so on the context of the scenario. Like I well, said, you've Econo, got a scenario where... May, it's, uh, you know... My, well, my you're not a fucking uncle. lawyer, Connor. Fuck you. Yeah, I'm a fucking We gotta cop. bring peace go. <laughs> somebody, somebody get peace go. I'm just kidding. All right, so all right, so basically, like it's going to it. What I'm sure Ikado Boy was about to say is, it's whether or not you can articulate the fact that you feel like an imminent threat of like death or great bodily harm. That's for like lethal force, but even just the usage of force, force is like you know imminent fucking uh, chance of harm. Like you have always have the right to defend yourself, and on top of that, like at least from a fighting perspective as well. Um, allowing somebody to walk up into your face without having like uh, the ability to back away or the ability to block yourself or put your hands up or anything like that. Um, or if after you warn somebody, somebody continues to like encroach on you, those are all signs of impending violence at which point you can act. And on top of that, the aggressor would be deemed the person if you're like, hey bro, listen, I'm not trying to fuck with you. Stay, stay away from me, I'll stay away from you. If they take a step towards you at that point, you have every right to assume that they're about to commit violence against you. You, yeah, you already like, communicated to them what's going on. Yeah, if, you, if you've communicated to them, I feel threatened by you stepping towards me angrily and they continue to do that, then of, of course, I think within reason, and, and I think legally you would be in the clear in most What if every they're walking state. away from you? Who? What do you mean? Well, so Zimmerman said that he was walking back to his car, so he'd stopped following Trayvon. He was oh, walking back Trayvon, to his car. Trayvon would have been wrong, but it also would have been he said, she said, because we don't know. Right, yeah, but you I'm asking him, but that's the story we have right now. You can say you don't sure. believe Zimmerman's story, but that's the story. I'm, I'm saying I don't know. I, I uh, if, yeah. Under that story, if Zimmerman was walking back to his car, Trayvon says, hey, what up? Why the fuck are you following me? What's going on? And then uh, Zimmerman says, I don't want any problems. I'm just going to my car. Leave me alone. And then fucking the fight is on and he starts fucking him up. Yeah, of course. So Zimmerman can defend himself. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, if, if that was the, if that was, if we had the video camera there and that was the course of events, then yeah, I think that would certainly your, 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 your case that you felt threatened at that point becomes a lot more sketchy. Yeah. yeah the, it, well, and there's like, th I think the reason why we point out all the fuck ups that happened beforehand is because we're looking for all the variables that could prevent the situation in the first place. That's what we're pointing out. Either when we're talking about uh, Trayvon's behavior or if we're talking about uh, Zimmerman's behavior, what we're looking for is the way to avoid this. Yeah. I mean, I think that no matter how you feel about, guns or, or or race issues or anything like that i think that most people could say that hey you know the way that george zimmerman handled this scenario is probably not exactly the way that you want to handle scenarios like this right um and uh you know that's i think that's pretty that's fair or, or if you're gonna do some if you're gonna do some shit like that uh, uh, expect that it could result in violence and, and like and like that's the thing is like we're supposed to not actively try to engage in violence so if that's going to happen, motherfuckers, goddamn chaos, dickheads. Getting swarmed. So I'm going to engage in some violence, okay? Sorry. Yeah. What are you playing, Carl? I'm playing Dark Tide. Dark Tide. Oh, is it? I still vote for... Is it good? Sorry. Sorry. It's sorry. Very good. Sorry. <laughs> I still vote for turning night. this into a, a Dark Tide stream. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you guys could do it, you know? Um, uh, I, I think um, we're kind of getting to 2 o'clock. So um, we're getting to 2 o'clock. This has been super fun. Um, the next few days I'm going to be away from my computer, but when I get back, we can do another one of these. 
maybe and um and we'll think of some good stuff like is there too much leftist influence in public schools or something like that or of course like stardust that. you're 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 not gonna stream for a few days uh i don't know if i'll stream I'm, i may stream uh because i have a, a weird thing about not streaming um and i get very I was uh, so neurotic <laughs> yeah but um but... you know you know you're going to stream i don't know why you're saying this. I'm, yeah, going you're gonna gonna some IRL shit or something. I'm going to try not to okay um and so we'll see yeah um but i won't be able to do this kind of stuff while i'm away from the next couple of my, days my so. only complaint just a smidge less animal fucking like we yeah, don't yeah. have to have zero animal mm. fucking we just but gotta spice it up a little bit, but we probably we, a dash of it. There was a just lot a, of animal yeah. fucking. Yeah, we just just a dash of it is enough. I think we put like a right. whole like bag of it in here. In the future, so, I will stick to fucking one animal. Uh, I say dogs and cats and cows and hamsters and donkeys. I'll, I'll just stick to the, the hamsters next time. I appreciate that. Thank you. No problem.